All right, it's the Thursday evening overdose. Thursday, and we are here. Thank you for joining us March 19th, 2015 for this impromptu show that we do every Thursday night. Uh, If you haven't checked out our Sunday show, uh, please go and check that out because it's way better. It's way better. Uh, But this uh, this was a show that I put together to accommodate one member of the team in particular. Uh, there was, Which member? There was one member of the team. By the way, you have a microphone for what you just did there. There was one member of the team in particular that I was feeling like I should accommodate to try to bring him into the fold a little more, make him feel a little bit more important, like he was uh, making some decisions and coming up with some ideas, and he said, let's do a Thursday show that's all off the top of our heads. And that way we'll practice and we'll get to think on our feet. And I said, great. Yeah, let's do it. So I set it up. I got the whole studio going at my house. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did, I did a lot of work to put this you all did. together. It's very, very different um, here than it used to be. And it was all uh, it was all for this particular member who is, uh, who's just really just shown less and less interest <laughs> as we've gone along until he just pretty much stopped showing up. Yeah, he kind of faded away. And he faded out nicely. Yeah. So we have seen... Kind of eased the transition for us, I guess. Yeah. And uh, it looks as though we've seen the end of the Earthlings run on the show. And, uh, you know, it's a... It's like a... I wouldn't say bittersweet, but it's... You know, something. it's right about down the middle, even (laughs) emotionally. It's like, well, it sucks, but also it's kind of (laughs) awesome. So, I mean, (laughs) we're going to have, uh, we're going to have a lot easier time getting through things. We're going to, we're, we're going to have, you know, the person that caused a hundred percent of the fights won't be here. Yeah. So, you know, whatever, as much as I liked having him around and people around the show know that, I mean, I worked overtime to try to keep him included, right? I mean, it, yeah, was, absolutely. it was not something that was easy to do. And Mm-mm. everybody around here did the best they could to try to fucking be nice to him and make him, <laughs> you know what I mean? And make him feel comfortable. And that I just, started buying him a Coke. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was, yeah. Andrea bought him a soda every week. Uh, we, you know, we did the best we could with the earth thing and just we're not, we're not cool enough to keep his attention. I suppose. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. So I mean, we're we're now faced with the uh, <clears throat> the decision of what to do next because I designed the show around me and the Earthling and our dynamic basically because it started it, obviously it started way back at the beginning with just me, but I kind of always wanted him to be involved and you know mm-hmm. I based then the you know the majority of the shows that we've done around his and my dynamic. That we would, you know, and, and those topics that we would choose and the, and the way that we would formulate the show was largely based around that. So now we've developed a show that works that way. and um, Yeah, and it was working very well, I feel. Well, when he would when, show up and, when and it was working. not be drunk. and Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, <clears throat> but, you know, a lot of times it was very frustrating. So, you know, that's the thing is now we're going to have to really reform the show. The Sunday show is going to be going a lot differently. Um, I'm not even sure. I don't even know if we're looking for a co-host. I don't no. know. I, I have no idea. Um, see, because I didn't need. I. It wasn't like I need a co-host, so I'll I'll find somebody I know. It was like, hey, this would be an interesting show. Yeah, me and you talking. Right. But, you know. Um, yeah, I just don't. I just don't know where we're gonna go from here. Uh, whether it's gonna be me doing a lot more research on my own and doing like more solo pieces like I did, or if we try to make a consistent group thing happen that works, you know, and what dynamic to go with there and what Mm -hmm. fucking approach to take and what, you know, how do we work together? You know, we have worked all that shit out with stupid fucking Patrick, the earthling. God damn it. And, um, and he's, yeah, he's pretty much just walked out of the operation for no reason. We had a, we had a good show last time, right? Yeah. His last show was, well, he made the last show pretty difficult because he was drunk. But it was okay. Yeah, but it I mean, I listened, I listened to it. A lot of people are going to find it unlistenable because of how much interrupting he did throughout the whole <laughs> show. I mean, it was like it had – there were parts that it just had to be a joke. And you're mm-hmm. like, I, this guy can't <laughs> possibly be like, here, just try to tell me a sentence about something you did yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I had to go to work. Really no, because I have – 
I had to go like because I got a job. No, don't see. You don't stop. Oh, you, you're trying to get a sentence out. God damn it! I had to go to work really early right, in the morning, I, and I didn't have I was, a chance to walk my dog before we. No, went. I was just gonna say before, before and I, I got home, and he was yeah, I was just so saying, excited that he jumped in the air and fell yeah, right was, on his back. I got a job. Yeah, yeah that's terrible. That was literally. I mean, that's not an exaggeration, right? As one person's trying to get through a sentence, he's just interjecting every two seconds and won't let, you, <laughs> will not let anyone finish a sentence. I at the last show that he did. I, at one point, wrote a note on a piece of paper really angrily that said, let me finish my fucking sentences. And then I didn't even pass it to him because here's what would happen. If I gave it to him, he would go, what's that? And just stop the show. And yeah. Go, you just hand me a paper that says, let me finish your set. What does it say? <laughs> let you finish my sentence. No. Wait a second. So I just didn't even hand it to him. Like, let's just keep going. <laughs> you should just, you know what we should do? The show should just become you having a conversation with you and your impression of him. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> see, I I do walk around having conversations with myself all day. This is supposed to be a break from that, <laughs> where I pretend to be a fucking halfway normal human being that can converse with others. Oh, speaking of which, uh, let's see, if we're waiting for people to fucking join, join the show here. So people join, we'll give the fucking number out. But uh, but yeah, so we don't we don't know where this is gonna go, and we really hope uh, that that I guess the transition will be smooth. Is all I can fucking say. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, his we can... absence in no way means the end of the show. So no, absolutely not. Absolutely so not. So if anybody's wondering, it's just gonna be different. That's all. Yeah. And we're gonna get. We're gonna have to figure out how to be more entertaining with the people that we've got. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's that's gonna be it. Because it's not. See, it's not like he didn't offer anything. I mean, he he gave the show like kind of a wild card edge to it. Yeah, he that, was a total wild card. That would make things a little more spontaneous, and I think is a reason for people to tune in a lot of times to go like, okay, they're gonna get to topics I'm interested in, and then there's also this chance of maybe something crazy and a fight mm-hmm. and a fucking. A guy who who is completely moronic trying to defend yeah. a, a position <laughs> that doesn't that's, make any sense. That's just indefensible, <laughs> yeah. you know. And and so, uh, you know, there's it's a it's a big trade off. It's it's pretty much for me. I'm like right down the middle. I'd like to remain friends with the Earthling if he tunes into this. You know, I'd like to be friends. Yeah. I'd like to keep working on the music thing we were doing. But uh, you know, I I would not like you to come back. <laughs> the talk show so that's that's about how i feel what do you think yeah i'd agree with that i still like him but if we can it's start just, counting on him not being here then we can then go we, on to the yeah, next thing we can really do things right yeah so uh so the idea I, I also agree he brought something kind of undefinable to the show which i am going to miss so. yeah undefinable but also like pretty unlovable yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was gross. <laughs> like fucking dark. Whatever. It was a quality. Yeah. He, he brought a quality. Yeah. So. Um, although he hated equality. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, it was always a trade off with him. So, so far, the only idea we've really had so far is to have a show where we smoke bongs the whole time. Yeah. This is us trying to cope with the transition. <laughs> um, so tonight's going to be the bong show. I don't know, Andrew, why don't you, um, why don't you, why don't you rap to the people while I while I get my tokes in over here. Okay, well the first thing <laughs> Yeah. What I really want to talk Getting about my tokes in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, I wanna talk about the poo that was so smelly it forced an airplane to turn around. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard about this. Uh fill me in. Where the fuck was this? Uh, let's see. They were flying. Uh, it was a seven and a half hour flight to Dubai from Britain. Um, and a half an hour into the flight, they had to turn around. It was like just over a half an hour into Holy the flight. Holy shit, I haven't smoked a bong in a while. <laughs> Way too big of it. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. All right. Uh, that the pilot made an announcement that said that the smell was so unbearable they had to all turn around and leave the plane. Oh my god! Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> and all of the people on the plane were forced to wait fifteen hours until the next flight. 
<laughs> okay. Is there, did you get any, find any details about this? Because there's got to be some some extra fucking there's some some extra kind of flavor to this shit. There's not this is not a normal terrible shit. Like somebody shit all over the wall. <laughs> no, what they <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody they, shit their pants. They uh, on the way, and that was their like clever way of covering that up discreetly for the person or yeah something fucking happened shit got somewhere other than in a toilet had to have well they say that there was a (coughs) pungent smell coming from one of the toilets the official statement is that it was liquid fecal excrement and that's all that they disclosed and they had to actually turn the plane around yeah because that was better than putting up with the smell yeah there's not enough ventilation on planes. No, it's scary. Planes are fucking gross. Yeah. Have you been in one? Yeah. Fucking disgusting. <laughs> They're terrible. It's, yeah. yeah. It's awful. It's like every time I'm in there, I don't know if I do it to myself in my head because I just feel like I'm stewing in just sickly, like cycling bacteria just uh, through every like orifice of every person on the plane. I have, and there's um, just air and fucking water vapor just like cycling through everyone, you know. So like you're on a plane, you're there's no way you're not getting anything anyone else has. Right. Uh, you're just all sharing diseases. Yeah. Just baking in this little fucking weird. Uh, because the pressure, and then you know, if there are kids by you. Kids are always covered in germs. But you, you're in that pressurized thing, you know. It's like you're in just a little fucking petri dish yeah. <laughs> up there. You know what I mean? It's awful. Yeah, that's terrible. And then I always get fucking sick every time I'm on a plane, like colds and 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 like yeah. sick for a week. You know. Here. Um, <clears throat> I have never used a bathroom on a plane or a bus. But I have used a bathroom on a train because I took an 18-hour train ride one time. And there was literally no other option. Otherwise, I would never have used it. I uh, sat on the very back of a bus next to the bathroom one time. Why? Well, because (laughs) if you're on a Greyhound, and I don't know if they're still like this, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know what I'm talking about. It was for a long time that you would want the fucking... It's like a... This is another trade-off. It's... You were next to the bathroom, so if somebody took a shit, it was fucking terrible. But if you got the very back seat of the Greyhound, you had three seats and then another seat or like like or a seat or two, whatever, facing you. So you could have your little group back there in like your own little bus apartment, you know. Gotcha. And maybe even set up something for a table in between you and whatever, mm-hmm. you know. So that was the place to be, but <clears throat> you had to be right next to the bathroom. Yeah, that sucks. That's the whole fucking thing. But I can't imagine what has to happen for them to have to turn a plane <laughs> a plane around because the shit smell is that bad. I mean, it all right, so I'm thinking also about the way the person cuz you know who the it's like there's no way that anyone's confused about who the person is who took the shit. Right. So is but there I there's nothing in the news about like that's that's the news to me. Yeah, who what did the are guy, you? And who did, what did they do? Why yeah. is the play? Did they just fucking <laughs> sit there reading their book? Like, uh, just get through this, you know. Just yeah. pretend they don't, you know. And and the, pe- his collar. <clears throat> the people around him are just like like, and especially people got shit to do. They're on their fucking flight, and people next to them are like, motherfucker, you just took a shit so <laughs> explosively rancid that we actually have to turn a plane around, like. I'm going to miss my nephew's wedding. Does anyone say any? I would, <laughs> what would you do? I would probably have to say something. I probably... Ha- I, I wouldn't. I would be the one that would speak up and just maybe not be mean, just be like, all right, dude, I got to ask, like... <laughs> like, wh- what was it? What is happening inside <laughs> of you? What's... What is the deal in there? Is this How, normal? Yeah, I mean, are you fucking rotting inside? What is going on? <laughs> oh, you Man. just looked at it and just gagged. Was that a real gag? Yeah, that's you... gross. I can't, like, imagine. He's <laughs> like he's just shitting his own rotting flesh out. His yeah, intestines his just intestines fucking... His intestines are just, like, feel like molten lead yeah. all the time. And they're just dying inside, and he's just shitting actual, you know... Like, chunks of his organs. Of his flesh and organs <laughs> yeah. out, yeah. It's like, is this normal? I don't know. I gotta go to fucking <laughs> what, Dubai. This, yeah, uh, I that's uh, time for this. If I uh, if I w- I would definitely say something, 
And then I would also definitely follow the guy for a while <laughs> after after we got off. You know, your trip is already fucked. When, yeah. when we got off, I would definitely have to go after him and just see what he's going to do next. Because he's probably, like, holding it together. He's going to go shit way worse. Because if, like, that's what he... <laughs> Let's out on a plane. He's gonna he's gonna walk to like a gas station and close the door, and the place is gonna explode. You know, <laughs> like you know, just go in the bathroom. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Show it like a a bird's eye view of the entire planet with this little, you know. Um. Oh God. That's that's what's gonna happen with that guy. I mean, what the fuck could he have eaten? You know. Oh. I can't imagine. That's the worst thing ever. Well, I don't want to think about that anymore. Uh, you also told me about some some dogs that uh, yeah. like ganged up on some dude that was beating him up. <laughs> yeah, in China. Okay, so China has tons of stray dogs, and but they, they did work it, in like really intricate packs with each other. They like did it a day later, right? I yeah, think. they like took revenge a day later. Um, let's see. A driver kicked a stray dog that was sleeping in his parking space, and a day later, the dog returned with some friends. They came back and vandalized the man's vehicle. Uh, there are photos here. I'll share them on the page. But they were biting it um, and, like, jumping on it and, and, like, digging on it and scratching it with their nails, and it, they left a bunch of scratches and dents. It's awesome. It shows one of them chewing on the wheel well. Hold on. I'm going to share this. I'm pulling it up right now, too. This is a... <clears throat> How do so he had to like communicate to them somehow, like, like no, dude, this dude really fucked me up yesterday. We yeah. we we have to get this guy there sitting around. The other dogs are like, I don't know, man. Like I'm hungry. Like we live on the street. <laughs> you know, pick fights with people for no reason. Like we need to go to the park and get fucking uh, yeah, you know, discarded sandwich bags and shit. Lick them all, stupid, <laughs> stupid dogs, and uh. <laughs> What goes around comes around. Here, this is this article. You'd think by now everyone would know this. Not this guy. After a driver in Chongqing, China, kicked a stray dog that was sleeping in his parking space, that dog returned a day later with some friends. Uh, they came back to vandalize the man's vehicle. Um, let me check out these pictures. So what all what all damage did they do? Uh, they left scratch marks on the car and dents in it from jumping on it and biting it. That's so cool. Look. God damn. Yeah. There's another one where it shows him, like, biting it real good. <clears throat> I don't know. I put it up on the page, that one. Ugh, gonna... that, doesn't that hurt your fucking dog teeth? He doesn't care. He's Ugh. pissed. How can a dog just bite He's metal? not taking any shit from anybody. My dog chews on coins. And today he picked up a spoon and ran around with it. Fucking long, pointy teeth are probably <laughs> scraping on the fucking metal paint. <laughs> like, ugh. How can you put up with that? That's a horrible, like, can you imagine just, bite, oh, God, now I can't stop thinking about <laughs> biting a car. Yeah. Uh, oh, we should no. not be smoking so many bongs on the show. Listen to what's <laughs> happening. Now I'm, like, obsessed with biting a fucking, the side of a car, and I, like, I can't, I have to, like, push my teeth back in, or they feel like they're going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> just go grab some aluminum and bite that. That'll satisfy your craving. <clears throat> All right. Let's, uh, let's try to, so this is our, uh, I, I think I filled people in already, but. This is our only idea. So when uh, the Earth, <laughs> when the Earthling left, I was like, "All we can do is just smoke bongs for the entire show until we're completely incoherent." Yeah, that's all we've got. That's this our is bit. it. If you've got a fucking better idea, why don't you call us up? Six, yeah, bitch. Six three zero five nine nine rubs. Six three zero five nine nine R U B S. Oh, there's nobody fucking here. Wow, this is a bad night. No, we got somebody. <clears throat> no, this is a bad night. It's a bad night. Someone's here real, though. It's a real bad night. Who are you? Uh, what else? Uh, <laughs> well, what else you got? I think that's it about the dogs. I don't know. I love that story, though. Why? Because those stray dogs are awesome, and they probably have a really big, fairly intelligent community that can communicate with each other. It oh, is I like that kind of stuff. I like you can go get like your dog thug friends. Yeah. Like, Let's go bite up this car. Well, and you know, there are those dogs. There's. I don't know if we've talked about this before or not, but there's a pack of dogs in Moscow that learned how to ride the subway system. They take public transport from the suburbs. Yeah, into everyone the city. knows about those dogs. Um, I don't know. It's just cool. I like to see them evolving. That's not impressive. All right, fine. To me, biting a biting a biting a car all together like that <laughs> in a coordinated attack is pretty fucking cool. I just yeah. got a text from our old pal Matt Gear. 
uh, who is my uh, artist buddy that brings over like uh, interesting prostitute friends of his and uh, then talks about being a dominatrix and stuff. Remember him? Uh, yeah, that rings a bell. Uh, he's been on the show a couple times. He says, uh, I'm going to try to be there at eight, dyeing my hair like a bitch. So that's, he wants, and that's every time, five minutes. every time he's here, we talk about like prostitution or dominatrixing dom- and dominatrices, dominatrices, um, dominatrices. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> he's like, dude, I'd love to actually talk about art at some point on the show. You yeah. Know, like, Cause he's an artist. All right. Yeah. Come by. He's a fucking great artist. And, yeah. uh, I want to help him promote his stuff to our, uh, you know, over 12 fans internationally. Yeah. Hey, you know who's on the phone? Who? John Black. Monica. Wow, Jesus. <laughs> John, Let me tell you something. It's John Black the Destroyer. John Black the Destroyer? I'm the Destroyer. Hello. Here I'm going to destroy Alcoholics Anonymous. Okay, go ahead. It was really convenient earlier because I had this whole thing growing up on my phone about, you know, the six levels of cult and what makes something a cult, and it made it really like a lot of sense, but I'll give you the basics, I'll break it down. First of all, they remove you from the people that you know and that you trust. Second of all, if you don't buy into their dogma immediately, they punish you. And as soon as you start buying into their dogma, they start rewarding you. And then as soon as you start spouting the dogma, you get, you know, privileges. It's just a big bag of shit. And it's nonsense. And they said, like, oh, we're not a cult. And the whole thing is, like, hey, hey, you know, oh, you want to get free of drugs? Well, you can, you know, just pray to a higher power. It can be whatever you want. It can't be whatever you want. It always comes down to a Christo-Judeo, like, two-part system. You're either on the good side or the bad side. I don't know. It's, it's a fucking bag of shit. I don't like them. I don't like these people. I don't like what they did in my life. So you're saying they're Speaking a cult? Hmm? Yeah, he said you're saying they're a cult, right? That's what you're yeah, getting. Yeah, they're at. a cult. Yeah, okay. I've always been. You know, years ago, it's a court or it's a court ordered cult. Yeah, yeah. Years ago, I uh, tried to get into it, and it just really creeped me out uh, right off the bat, kind of. You know, and. Could not really, uh, could not really see my way to taking it seriously, you know. And the guys that were in there, in there, just seemed like really dead inside, you know. And I'm like, if this is supposed to help you, why does everyone look so fucking strung out in here, you know? Mm-hmm. Like all the people in there, just like, and they're all outside chain smoking and just fucking drinking massive amounts of coffee. I'm like, is this yeah, not a lot of people better? And like, like yeah, they're not I mean, dealing like, with it; they're subjugating it and turning it into a different, a different area. It's like. It's completely ludicrous. Yeah. No, because you're... Um, <clears throat> at one well, time, you, you I, I, I've had a, a, drunk a bit really of a... Wants to hear a bit of a, a bunch of people that have been problem. dry drunk forever <laughs> and are really upset about it. Yeah, great, John. <laughs> John the Destroyer, everybody. <laughs> um, John the Destroyer. Hey, this is a, he calls shit, me... He, you know? John, this is John. I've been to rehab I, twice. Yeah. I want to include John no in good. the talk show, so this was his idea for a bit, and I said, go ahead. You can be John the Destroyer. <laughs> Call up any time. John the Destroyer. <laughs> Wait, John. Uh, also, another myth I want to destroy for you. John, one second. Is the fact John, that oh, seahorses are nice creatures because they're not. Go on. Seahorses sea sea kill things. No. Yeah, they do. They're what murderer. Are... Who? They're, they're murder fish. Murder fish. <laughs> They eat all kinds of weird shit. God damn Not it. Not saying they like stalk their prey, but like See. They're uh... This is why I was like, okay. I thought at first he meant because he will destroy the show. And that's <laughs> what I thought it was sort of like a double meaning, you know? Yeah. Destroy the show. Alright. What was your next thing? <laughs> Um, oh, okay, all right. Well, it had to do with seahorses being cannibalistic and awful human Cannibals beings. Cannibals or carnivores? And not human beings. Cannibalistic. Cannibalistic? They yes. eat other seahorses? What are you... <laughs> because you're in Trix's yep. chair now. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't understand anything. Also... Here. Yeah. No, I thought he said that they just eat 
living things. I didn't I've know recently, that you I've just recently lost. found out that all twins have sex with each other. Mm-hmm. That is true. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure it's got to be true. Yeah, yeah. No, everybody, uh, everybody, fucking uh, avoids talking about it. But I would say at least fucking ninety five percent of twins are probably getting it on. No, you're like here, here. I'm tired of jacking my wiener. You jack it. I'll jack yours. It's the same wiener. All right. What else you got for and us? All of a sudden, you're <laughs> jacking off with your 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 twin brother. <laughs> Uh, what else? What else? I got. I'm gonna destroy. I told him. Uh, <laughs> Wait, this is like- uh, we got we got baby woodpeckers in our tree. It's really cute, and they all keep poking around the wood. They're pretty good. Yeah. I saw a woodchuck trundle across the road the other day, trundling along, doing a good job being a woodchuck. And uh, my neighbor's house, uh, their basement is full of twenty thousand gallons of water. What do they? What do they do with it? I don't know. They don't live there. Is it an indoor pool? <clears throat> well, I don't know. Like I, I was trying to talk in Vinny and coming up for some B and E, but uh, he's not into it. But we'd have to wait through like sewage water to get to it. But like the lady has Parkinson's, she's gone to an old person's home, and now her relatives come out once every <laughs> once in a while and check on the property oh, about four wow. times a month. And in the meantime. <laughs> Their water pipes have burst oh, and flooded their entire show. basement. <laughs> so I'm thinking I just might like, be doing the, the world service just by like liberating stuff from the house before it gets moldy. <clears throat> yeah, I think you should do it. Come on, do some crimes with me. Come on, let's all do some crimes. Okay, John the let's Destroyer, everybody. <laughs> John the Destroyer, I want to thank you for being on the show. Uh, one time, let me just, uh, I want to record your little intro here right now. So go ahead and give me a Sorry, big. I do a, I do a vocal. Just go say John the Destroyer really loud and, you know, slow. Okay. And I'll give you some Ready? Echo. Yeah, go ahead. John the Destroyer! Okay, that'll. I destroy. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, yeah. That was just as awful as I was hoping it would be. Yeah. Um, so we, we'll just figure we'll play out. Play it back for me. Let me hear it. I'm going to figure out how to uh, punch up your segment, you know, a little bit. And uh, we'll work on that. I think we'll keep doing that. John the Destroyer, why don't you call us up next week? And, uh, hey, 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 hey. You have fun touching each other. Happy trails. Until then. I know you're twins. You creepy weirdo. No, we're not. Is that Was that your joke? Because we're not twins. Do you think we're twins? Yeah, you are. <laughs> I can't tell you apart. I look in the camera and you look the same. Yeah, we have the same glasses. Yeah. That's probably what it is. Oh, well, see, that's what it is. You, all right, so have gay eye sex with each other. <laughs> all right, fine. All right, I'll see you Bye. later. <laughs> um, <clears throat> John, well, that was nice. John the Destroyer. What an idiot. We're related. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, I was hoping that he would be that stupid and awkward when he called and he yeah, did not disappoint. So, you know, really whatever. I know some people aren't going to be into that, but it's, it's like <laughs> when you when you have like a, a little <clears throat> show going on or whatever, whatever you're doing and like you have the opportunity to just let one of your good friends just make a fool of himself it's like yeah. I, that's i don't know it's too funny to pass <laughs> up um so uh where were we going here um oh corn syrup we have corn syrup news now you when was the last time you consumed corn syrup knowingly oh shit uh a long long time I, I stopped, uh, yeah, two or three years or something. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure, like, once in a while when I was drunk, I might have fucking grabbed something, you know, when I was really thirsty. But, like, I really don't. You're you know, pretty I, yeah, I'm pretty, I pretty much don't. Yeah, I pretty much stay away from it. So, yeah. Sometimes I get it, like, in a barbecue sauce. The weird, the weird thing about, yeah, it's probably, that's what I'm thinking too. Probably shit like that that I don't Ketchup. notice. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> but the reason I stopped is. Because I, you know, I was reading about it at the time, and I, to be honest with you, I don't even really readily uh, recall the reasons I fucking stopped. I, yeah. That was at a time I was doing a lot of research on food and stuff, mm-hmm. and I just remember 
the drawing the line with a few things like most artificial sweeteners like aspartame and and things like that i just stopped them all at once like this shit is you know designed to fucking to to hurt you you know right so um i say like probably two or three weeks into not eating you know eating any candy or fucking soda with any corn syrup which Mm -hmm. i which we have a lot of us have done our whole lives if you're like around our age especially um it got to be where when i did have a sip of something it just tasted fucking disgusting like like chemically yeah just like it's yeah why would i even want this you know it's i had a similar experience yeah yeah and it was it, it was gross and um you know and i think yeah once in a while i've i've sipped something you know here and there and it's just really fucking gross. Yeah. So I'm, I could tell that your body, when it's used to not having it, doesn't want it, you know? Right. And if you hadn't been tricked into it as a kid. You would never want it would in never the first really, place. Yeah, you'd never really naturally want it. So what do you got on it? Well, they're <clears throat> um, changing the way it is labeled on food products so that it is more vague and harder to discern, discern when it's in your food. They are somehow... Got the permission to just label it as fructose, which is f- fucking s- fucked up. Because fructose comes from lots of sources. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. I never usually worry when I see fructose. No, I mean, it's a sweetener, but it tends to come from a more natural and less processed source. So now I'm supposed to worry instead about... Instead of GMO processed corn syrup, which is doing who knows what to you. And like you said... You know, you feel different without it, and it's they're just gonna sneak it in now. I uh, I don't really care. I do. Everything's already so fucked. Yeah, you're gonna start, but you're gonna probably start getting corn syrup and stuff without realizing it. You now, know? you know what? Now I'll just drink water out of the faucet like the cats, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll actually climb up on the counter to do it. Yeah, and kneel down. <laughs> And and lick put your face. and I'll put the water on a dribble yeah. and lick the faucet <laughs> <laughs> in the dark. That's why that's the main reason I need a roommate. <laughs> fucking walk in on that faggot. Yeah. You're Take ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ready for your life to change? I'm not going to stop doing this. Not a chance. <laughs> that'll be the only abnormal thing I do. Just get yeah. a roommate, and and that'll be the just be a completely normal person, <laughs> except for I put my butt up in the air and kneel on the you know like on the edge of the sink, drink like a cat, <clears throat> and then compl- and then just completely deny that there's anything wrong with that. You know, but yeah. threaten to kill him if he tells anyone. <laughs> 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 so yeah, but the the uh, <laughs> the corn syrup uh, the corn syrup's wacky. Yeah, uh, that's fucking whack. Do you remember bro. offhand like what a lot of fucking shitty effects of the high fructose corn syrup and shit like that is? Um, well, it breaks down your immune system. Um, they have linked it to causing autoimmune diseases. Uh, it causes massive weight gain. It's difficult to process, um, just like all refined sugars. So it tends to just turn into fat. We're having a hard time talking because of bongs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bong show, but <clears throat> I don't know. It's going to, I don't know how long we can keep this up. Yeah. It's really drying my fucking throat and lungs out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> is it doing that for you? Yeah. I forgot. I haven't smoked bongs in a couple no, years. No, this and was I'm your like, idea. Well, I thought it would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, it's all fucking dry and shitty, and I don't want to talk anymore. <coughs> we need somebody to come save us. Matt, somebody, Matt's on his way, though. Matt's on his way? Yeah. It's, it's 10 after. Nah, he'll be here. All right. Don't worry about well, it. Maybe we should give out the number for our listener. So, uh, so. <laughs> what? I already did. 630-599-RUBS. And it could even just be John the Destroyer. I don't know. Nobody's around tonight. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. This is a fucking slow, shitty fucking night. It is. Everybody. Fuck you. Uh, people who aren't listening. Oh, you know what? This is a great time, like I always talk about, to uh, plan with our YouTube listeners 
the murder of all our Ustream listeners. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, because there are... <clears throat> so stay tuned no. for that yeah. in the second hour. We'll do that. For some reason, we'll, we won't do <laughs> it now. We're going to put it off. We'll we're we're going to do a little research. Yeah, so uh, what else did you have? We're, bl- we're blowing through fucking... We're blowing through all this shit. Um, oh, the fucking people. Yeah, the people. Yikes. All right, so there's people out there, which is... Everybody kind of fucking knows about this by now, but... You wanted to bring this to the show, the fucking people that want to cut their limbs off. I've been fascinated by this for years. I read an article, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 years ago about this, and I've kind of never stopped thinking about it. Um, It's called Body Identity Integrity Disorder, or Body Integrity Identity Disorder. Right. Um, And it's where people feel like they have a limb that doesn't belong to their body. Basically, like they are a person without a left leg, born in the body of a person who has a left leg they get like dis disassociated <coughs> with their limb right and they it like that seems like a normal thing to me yeah does it do you have a limb that you don't identify with um i have whole branches of my family tree <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but they've, they've kind of compared it to like, uh, transgender people who say that they're like a man born in a woman's body or vice versa. They, um, a lot of people describe it as a similar kind of association in the brain where they just don't feel like they belong in the body that they have. So a lot of them either self amputate or they concoct scenarios in which they quote unquote accidentally get injured in such a way that the leg needs to be amputated or the foot or the hand or the arm. I, I this is just like another thing that ju- I what what is what 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 is the use of a person like this? Are there any of these people <laughs> Wait, are there any of these people that's like Yeah, yeah, this guy he uh he really just couldn't believe that he had his fucking leg. So, I mean, he just tried to hack it off 50 times until finally he was able to get someone to, like, legally remove it or something, you know, so he could get the fuck on with his life. Meanwhile, the whole time, running, uh, like, a pro NHL hockey team. You know? like, there, <laughs> Are there any of these people just, like, just no. in, in positions of massive wealth and success? And, like, no, they're just all fucking useless slobs, I'm sure. Are there any of them that just aren't completely useless slobs? I don't think so. Can you try so. to find that out? Yeah, I'll find out. Because I'll guarantee you there's not one of them. Uh, not one see. of them. Cambridge University <clears throat> educated research scientist. Oh, God damn it. Gotcha. R- really? This is gotcha journalism. Uh, yeah, really. She. Good one. Uh, um, yeah, Chloe Jennings, who. Yeah. You would use a wheelchair even though her legs worked. And then uh, eventually got herself into a position where she needed the wheelchair. A lot, and here's the other thing: a lot of them are real secretive about it, and uh, and like don't want to talk about how they did what they did. Um, one hey, we guy, just had a caller that that I answered, and they fucking hung up right away. I was about to bring him on. Oh, well, call us back. Hey, if stupid! You're still out there. Call back. Stupid. Hey, stupid. Hey, stupid. I was about to bring you on. Call us back, stupid. You're supposed to chill out for two seconds. We got to finish our sentences. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I really buy it. Now, there's a, a lot of people who are trying to get it uh, classified as like a actual mental disorder, so that they can prescribe medical procedures, so that they can get legal. And safe amputations done. Um, but so far that hasn't happened. So people are basically mangling themselves. Why is not the answer... Okay, I got a thing. Here's what it is. It's a, <laughs> it's a really long chain with a bunch of neck shackles. It's just, and then don't even waste time on, a, on multiple chains. And then you take four horses that all have cancer that you're going to put down. And you fucking... You, you tie the chain behind the horses and you shackle every single one of these people's by the neck to this chain. And then you smack these horses in the ass with a fucking lawnmower blade until they run off a cliff and drag <laughs> all these people down into a fucking canyon. Why is that not the thing? 
You know, why is that? Yeah. Why is that not the immediate option? Hi, I'm a PhD in um, I don't give a fuck about stupid retards that want to cut shit off their bodies, <laughs> waste everyone. Like now there's people spending time, people, smart people that could be figuring out complex problems about science and, and biology and medicine are figuring out how to accommodate. No, the chain and the neck shackle. And the cancer Just horse and the lawnmower get blade. Get rid of them. Yeah. Cancer horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just send them off the fucking cliff. Just, yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense to me, but. Well, that's how. It, uh, thanks a lot, Obama. That's, that's, that's how universities brainwash people. Yeah. Let's save everyone and, and teach, them how to teach them how to cut their limbs off properly. Yeah. <laughs> There's no reason to fucking leave leave no one behind. We can leave no one behind. No, everybody really? has to live. We can't draw the line. <laughs> like why? I I don't At know. At this woman who wishes she was paralyzed. Or any. Yeah, I just don't understand how this is still like a, a human at this point. See it's this a girl. Waste of time. At the age of nine, she took action and pedaled her bike off of a four foot high acting stage. Landing on her neck. That didn't do it, though. Wait, what? Did she want to cut her head off? No, she wanted to disable her legs, but she fucked it up, and she almost died instead, but uh, but it didn't <laughs> paralyze her after all, so. <sighs> ah, I hate these it's, fucking people. Yeah, it's really bad. And plus, how I'm going to post this and, article. And this is another thing that's like, really, how hard is it to figure out, honestly, like, can you not find like a fucking some kind of uh when I I worked at a hardware store where there was a fucking cardboard like compactor fucking thing that would have crushed your fucking legs if you wanted to. There's something around. Yeah. Do something. Come on. I was really? ever a failure at this, you fucking losers. Idiots. Who was that? Who was that rich guy, some professor? No, that was a woman. A woman who a research scientist who studied at Cambridge University. And what did she cut off? She didn't cut anything off. She wishes she was paralyzed, so she keeps trying to paralyze herself. She found a doctor who was willing to do it, but she couldn't afford it. Um, and she just lives her life in a wheelchair. Even though she could use her legs, she doesn't. Jesus Christ. Why? What is wrong? I mean... Because she is a piece of garbage. Yeah. And she should be fucking... Taken outside, <laughs> put on a chain, and just shot up the ass with rock salt <laughs> over and over until she's dead. They, somebody should impale her ass first on a fucking shotgun full of rock salt, and then just hold it. Somebody, fucking big, strong dude, just holds her w with one hand upwards on a fuck on the end of a shotgun up her fucking anus, and just fires rock salt into it until she's dead <laughs> as she slowly sinks down the barrel. I'm in a bad mood, I guess, tonight. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> That's like the... F <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I feel like should be done to her. Yeah. I mean, well, why not? She might as well. She might as well be dead. That's what I'd like to do. To, yeah, that would be cool. Like, all right. See how bad you really want to, you know, destroy yourself. I will, uh, you know, arrange like a wheel of tortures for you. And, uh, you know, whatever you, whatever you land on is going to be what happens to you. And, and they're going to be nine of them, n nine of them <laughs> are, yeah, just come in. You don't have to, you know, <laughs> you know but, um, I think, I think someone's coming in. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the middle of the show, bro. Come on. I'm Mac, you Mac, you just came in. I could. No, it's okay. Um, right, you're in my spot. Sit down. What, what are we <laughs> talking, talking about, about here? That. We're talking about pe the the people that cut off their uh, their limbs. You know that. It's uh, a disease. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I move the cat? Yeah. Yeah. Just be careful with him. He's oh, old. I know how. Um. Are. All right. So Mac here just came in. He's moving cats around, and uh, I'm an old hand at this. he's he said he's an old, <laughs> an old hand at this. I used to have cats. On the cat ranch. Um. Let's get him set up here. So you already know about uh grab that uh screen. You already kind of know about this 
self amputation thing. You've heard of that before? Oh yeah, yeah. See, I didn't think it was because I heard about it so long ago, and anyone I had ever talked to didn't know what it was. So it's interesting to know that so many people have already heard about it. No, it's like a disorder where people are like they feel like they were born with a limb they shouldn't have or something, and then right. they, yeah, yeah. What yeah. do you think about that? I'm so, I'm oh well, yeah I've had I I've just been Maybe, suggesting yeah. different ways to murder them pretty much. I mean, that's <laughs> a disorder. I mean I don't. I usually support people's like whatever weird shit they want to do. I'm like, do it. If it doesn't fuck with me, and what do I care? But that's kind of the thing where if someone was like, hey, Matt, will you cut off my arm? I'd be like, no, bro, I won't. Right. right. That's that's <laughs> what I, I was just, I was kind of just saying the same thing. I'm like, is there nowhere that we kind of just draw the line of like, you know, you can almost do pretty much anything you really want anymore. Uh, the other way. Uh, yeah. You can almost do anything you ever want, really, you know, and like, is it why are we spending like time and resources and science on like allowing people to just cut their limbs? Like, come on, yeah. Can we just like, like I said, just tie them to a really long chain, yeah, full of uh, full of neck shackles, you know, and just shackle them all. Well, there's to a fucking people in horse India that are literally selling organs to live, and then we've got dumbasses cutting off arms for the hell of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> they could be selling those arms. Yeah, or something. Good money. Oh, but somebody's selling them. Oh yeah, somebody's probably. Well, who's buying them and for what? Dick Cheney. Is it Dick Cheney? Is he buying them all? He needs new hearts every fucking day. It seems like, right? He's probably got like three (laughs) right now. He does. He's unstoppable. He really does have to eat a lot of fucking kids and stuff. It's really really nuts. My friend Sang had a theory about. He was like, "That's why uh, Trayvon Martin got shot." He's like, notice Dick Cheney got a new heart the same fucking day. <laughs> and I was like, no way. <laughs> yeah. I should bring no him way. on. I should no. bring him on the show. He no. also no. 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 He Sorry. thinks Pee Wee Herman's in the Illuminati. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if you really get into like all that stuff, it becomes one of those things of like, hey, if there is this behind the scenes secret society that's like part of the fast track to success in all these fields, yeah, somebody's gonna be in it. Why not Pee Wee Herman? Paul Rubens. Well, he's such there's a- he is part of how like celebrities are built up and then sacrificed in the media, you know, and it's this cyclical thing that really happens that like satisfies a kind of sick part of the public's mind that really wants to see that like Coliseum death, you know, but we don't have that anymore. So they do it symbolically by like, you know, the Bill Cosby thing that's going on right, right now. I kind of almost think that maybe that's fabricated at this point because it's like just part of this thing that always happens, you know? And then again, people aren't perfect and there's going to be scumbags too. But, you know, um, I guess the point is, uh, what the fuck is the point? Uh, that, I'm not sure where that, you're going. I mean, he gets caught in a movie theater masturbating and... Why'd they ever take a show off for that, too, though? I never understood that. Because if you yeah, saw the mugshot, it's not like he was in his Pee Wee Herman fucking outfit. He was Paul Rubens. He had and nobody goatee. knew his name then, either. Yeah, I mean... Nobody he, fucking knew his name. Yeah. Poor Pee Wee. Unless you watched a lot of, like, uh, <coughs> Chich and Chong movies. At this point, do you think he gives a shit? Oh, absolutely not. He I didn't would, care then, either. Things no, have, cha- and and things have changed so it- much now, nobody would care if you masturbated in a porn theater. Mm-hmm. Like, that would be the, the one of the least taboo things you could do Is anymore. A- you know, like... Is a porn theater still a thing in a oh, lot yeah. of places? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think some people, I think, yeah. <laughs> do they exist around here? Oh, yeah. Not I, like in our neighborhood, but right. in Chicago. Fuck yeah, they do. Yeah. I, I think um, sense. I think it's still a thing. Like some people, that's part of the way they get off. It's like, I got to be in public, you know, seeing mm-hmm. this. And it's like a sneak around thing. And like, or, you know, there's like, uh, you know, really poor people that can only afford, because like, those places are cheap as fuck, right? Like, uh, isn't that kind of the point of them and those like peep show shit? And they go in there with like a couple dollars or whatever and, and, and do those little like, I don't even know what they are, but I, they're like, well, what, are, what, what are those? You, what kind of place are you talking about? Because there's a lot know. of different kinds of places. There's like the one know. in Boondock Saints? Yeah, just shit like these that you see in movies or like that, you know. Where it's uh, like a girl in a glass box. Oh, yeah. I knew a girl yeah. that did that. And where are those places? Well, there's one right in like Melrose Park if you want to see girls behind glass and they can like do stuff and you slide money through the little slot and then you that can do whatever you want. like a totally undesirable thing. Like, I'm like, why would I want to go creepily glare at a girl through, through a glass but like i don't even get that she i get interact be- with you i think i would get it more like before the internet like i would see why yeah. people would do it back back when it was like 
built up in your head and like you haven't seen a naked woman in like well, two it's weeks before there like, were cams well, you know. too like where you could ask them to do stuff because that's, that's right. like the same thing except it's live so if you want that you can pretty much get it in total privacy now yeah but, yeah but people still do it you know there's a thrill to having someone actually there talking to specifically you in real time in real life watching you fucking jerk off while you slide money into their slot have you been in there yeah really yeah how many times uh, a few. I mean, I, I haven't jerked off in there, honestly. I'd tell you if I did. I just, just didn't, because yeah. it, it just didn't seem like a clean place to fucking masturbate. Just but checking it out. It was, yeah, I mean, I, I, I knew people that worked there, too, and, and I, I kind of knew a girl that was doing that for a while, too, and it right. seemed like a cool gig. We had... I, I know creepy places, though, too. I've been to a strip club where, like, a couple of, like, girls I was friends with were stripping. It was, like, extremely awkward to me. <laughs> like, I don't, you know... <laughs> like, when we're at home, like... I don't like watch you change clothes really or anything. You know what I mean? Like I, or something like that. It's just like strange, like, eh, you know, yeah. it's not horrible or weird really that bad, but it's just eh, a little off to me. I don't know. Pretty much all my friends have seen me naked at this point. Yeah. Well, you're, you're like more weird than me. I'm just, just, <laughs> I'm just, just comfortable. You know? Like, no, I know. And when I travel with people, you know, like I don't, I'm not the kind of person that like gets all wrapped up in a towel when I come out of the shower and shit. I just come out and get dressed. I mean, fucking let it all out and just well, walk. You know, there's not like much. It's totally normal. There's not much to see, and it is totally normal. Like, yeah, I know, I know. I mean, what's the big deal? No, I don't really give a shit. I'm just, you know, just bullshitting because I'm really stoned. I'm working. No, wait, on it. it's no, it's the bong show. You have to. Yeah, it the is bong. the bong oh. show that we kind of forgot about for a minute. You have yeah, to. You have to smoke the bongs for the, the rest bong. of the show. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think that's we why, like this? Yeah, that's why we're like this. <laughs> Actually, let's take a break. Get uh, Matt Gear initiated, and then let's see. We immediately start talking about sex every time you come in. Let's. Uh, I'm sexy. Yeah, it's just emanating from you and spilling from your pores. Uh, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the new kind of 3D printer when we come back. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. And then right. he want uh, we we never get to talk about a little bit of art and and people checking him out and stuff and uh yeah. I'm and we'll, not here to promote my Yeah, shit. yeah, we but we never get around to it. So we'll we'll do a little bit of that too. Cool. Um Cool. So uh what? Couple minutes? Yeah, I'm going to eat some apples with peanut butter. And then, and then I'll come back and smoke a more bong. Oh, my God. <laughs> this show is terrible. All right. Whoops. Everybody, on the Sunday evening overdose, March 19th, thank you for being with us. We will be right back. We're back on the Sunday evening overdose. I mean, Thursday evening overdose. <laughs> That's right. Fuck. Thursday. <clears throat> it is the bong show. Bong show. It's our only idea. <laughs> that we- <laughs> it's our really only idea that we came up with for a show since the Earthling left. Yeah. It's a brilliant way to start the show, though. I'm liking it. To take the show in a new direction. Yeah, I'm liking yeah. it. I'm liking it. Matt Gear uh, sitting in. Luckily, uh, luckily, Matt Gear lives only a fucking. Hop, stones. Skip, I was gonna Stone go with stones throw. throw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay, hop, skip, and a jump. It is uh, down <laughs> the road, and uh, he's a great artist uh, and a, uh, a hell of a, a hell of a fella who's been sitting in with us on the show over the last I don't know six or eight weeks, once in a while when he can. I'm gonna keep it regular as I can. Yeah. So thanks for being here again. Oh, my pleasure. Andrea. Yeah. You wanted to kick it to us about 3D printing. It's a brand new type of 3D printer inspired by Terminator 2. <laughs> awesome. That is a real thing. So what it does is it creates a whole object and extracts it out of a vat of molten resin. So oh, there are videos. Um, I'm going to post this on the page right now so people can watch it. You should what get it on like our screen cost? here so we can talk. Is this so something only like... Big corporations can afford, or can people get these? It's uh, it's not ready for us yet. Okay, they're still working on it. Um, all of this three D, all this three D shit is a few years off still. I think before no, I people know, can. I know uh, a guy who has like one of those little ones where you buy the spools of plastic and right, yeah, right. yeah those but, those uh, you can get. This is uh, far more sophisticated, and uh, but I it think can make. Oh, well, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, it can make much much smaller, more intricate, and stronger items because it's made from 
one source instead of 3D printers now print layers of plastic. So they can get a good solid piece, but it's still layer by layer by layer. This can make um, uh, items so small that they can be injected into your bloodstream. Oh, cool. I mean, it's... I would assume this is for, like, medical stuff. Right. Well, it's for a lot of things. Here, here's this video. Um, There's no audio in it besides the music, I don't Mm. think. The music's really good, though. Yeah. Wow, well, think about all you could do with something like that. The way it works. So what is this thing fucking even doing? So you see like some, it's basically, you see like a complex little like, damn, it's so futuristic looking. It's like bringing like an object out of ooze. Just It's It's just pulling it out of there, yeah. Yeah, you don't even really see it. So this is sped up. I I don't know, for some reason, because of like movies, you know, I think I expect it to look like a bunch of lasers (laughs) shooting around and then, you know, and an object starts filling in, you know, just, you know, know, it's like smoking, you know, like, I don't know. That looks like some Hellraiser kind of shit. Yeah. It does look very futuristic to sci-fi. I can't deal with this. So the way it works. God, what if you were 90 right now? (laughs) <laughs> and you saw that? Uh, yeah. Fine. That's a trick. You're done. I, I'd That's be done. not real. Like, I'm there's, done. A, there's one more video on this page, too, where they make a miniature version of the Eiffel Tower. Um, so I posted that on the Facebook if anybody out there wants to watch these videos. They're pretty amazing. <laughs> and the way it works is it takes this resin, which um, hardens with exposure to light. No, that was at that blue. It's not a video. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because it's the Eiffel Tower. I don't know where I found the video for that. But anyway, uh, they, the resin hardens with exposure to light and softens with exposure to oxygen. So they have this resin kept at a really specific temperature and they created a screen, which is at the bottom, which uh, lets oxygen flow through at like a really controlled rate. And then it has it's clear and it has lights that basically draw the object layer by layer. But since it it doesn't print layer by layer, it's way, way more precise. And since it uses light and oxygen and not actual mechanical tools, they can create things that are super duper tiny and really, really intricate. Like a heart valve or yeah, something, exactly. right? Yeah, like- exactly. Yeah. Stuff that like goes in your veins, um, little teeny, teeny, tiny needles that can deliver medicine, um, stuff like that. So it's super futury and has a lot of potential to do even bigger and more intricate things. And hopefully good. You know, I was yeah. thinking today about how sad it is that we don't put the same amount of money into, like, medical science that we do, like, warfare. Right. <laughs> right? Like, we have great new guns and ships and tanks all the time, but, you know, I got I got one. I got one. <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah. pretty fucking impressive, though. You just the, the, don't we spend, like... It's, like, 33, 43 billion... On what? defense. I mean, isn't that isn't that like by far the biggest expense that we have as a as a country? Yeah, in a very very <coughs> big way. And who are all these people that want to fight wars all the fucking time? I don't know, assholes. <laughs> people who sell guns. <laughs> um, and like, um, so it is. Do you think the whole thing is driven by uh, by weapons manufacturing and and that whole industry? Daddy Warbucks. But it's also it's also about like controlling precious metals and fucking drugs and all kinds of shit in whatever regions they go to. I guess it's everything put together. It's all tied into guns though. Uh or <laughs> or tanks or bombs. Bombs and yeah, all kinds of shit. <coughs> Anyways, what else with this fucking 3D thing? Oh, well it, the uh people who came up with it said that they were literally inspired by Terminator 2, and I thought that was kind of funny too. Um, and that's actually getting more and more common now that people are seeing things in old sci-fi movies and that's they're like, hilarious. I can do that, you know? Well, look at like the Google watch. Or is it, yeah. is it that sci-fi writers are usually, and especially it was more, more true long ago, I think, but a lot of these guys over the years have been like former science teachers and fucking, uh, you know, scientists or whoever, you know? Uh, a lot of these guys really did know their shit, you know, and I'm not surprised they could make some pretty accurate predictions about where things were going. Unfortunately, George Orwell seems to have been the most accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, he was uh, pretty pretty on the money. Right? 
wasn't supposed to be a manual for like government. Except, except our government doesn't want us to exercise. That was the one thing about 1984. Right, they used, right. to, they used yeah. to make everybody yeah. do those stupid right. exercises. Right. Um, and we're gonna have big sister real soon instead of big brother. Yeah. And uh, and what else? <laughs> I'm fucking stoned. Yeah, those yeah. are the most delicious Bonjour. marshmallows. Whew. Yeah, the Damn. only thing we talked about on the break was how good these marshmallows are. Let's talk about them. Um, should we talk about them? They're yeah, because they're the, literally the best marshmallows <laughs> I've ever had in my fucking life. And we all seem honestly. to be big fans of marshmallows. Mm-hmm. They're so. the, the texture yeah. is amazing. They're called dandies. Mm-hmm. They're vegan. They're like $5 a bag, but they're totally worth it. Um, and, and they're like heroin. <laughs> yeah, they're really good. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm like blown away by how much I like these marshmallows. I, I totally agree. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> Um, Where did you get these? I got them at Jewel. God my damn. local grocery store. You guys got to check out these fucking marshmallows. Mm-hmm. And not even like, all right, so they'll probably never let us actually advertise for them. Um, no, but we would like to. Oh, dude. Well, let's write a jingle for them. They probably mm-hmm. don't have one yet. Dandies. <laughs> all right, anyways, let's get into something here. Oh, oh man. All right. Uh, we want to talk about art. <laughs> Right? Are you? Did you smoke too many bongs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, art's fucking awesome. And so it's Mac, a cruel mistress. Let Mac me here, you. here. He's a uh, he's a painter and uh, among other things, multi- but, yeah, multimedia a artist painter, totally. and yeah. And uh, you do something pretty cool, which is to take like fashion magazines and like pop culture magazines and shit, and kind of like what you. He does a thing where he like paints. Over the the you want to describe it? Sure, it's it's the Necrocolor series, and uh, it was originally I started doing them on like ads, and now I pretty much do them over anything, frankly. But it's it's to illustrate like if you've ever seen that movie They Live, it's just to illustrate the hollowness of pursuing material stuff. How you have you know they're dead on the inside, you know. So I started making them really brightly colored like ghouls in primary colors, and if you hashtag Necrocolor. It, you should be able to find it on the internet if you want to see what I do with the magazines. And that's just one of many different series of different stuff that I do. Yeah, they're really cool, though. I've, I'm a big fan of the uh, the Necro Colors, although somehow I didn't even know the name of it. you got to get that out there. I, yeah, I, I coined that, and I always hashtag it on there so that people know what to look for. It's, it's Necro Yeah, so check out, check out Necro Color, because those are... And if you follow Mac Gear Art on Facebook, he'll post this shit all the time and stuff. But uh, there's a whole folder of them in there. Yeah, yeah so it's all like brightly colored corpses, yeah, <laughs> basically yeah. on fashion magazines. Well, some are oh. full paintings, especially these days. I've been doing more that are just like a full painting where it's oh, cool. Okay. It's just like a basically a zombie painting mm-hmm. of someone wearing like a nice suit or not even sometimes. Like my favorite one is the yogi one where he's just a, it's a guy doing a yoga pose, but he's got three eyes and nipple eyes. I don't know. You'd have to see it, but uh, yeah, I can picture it. <laughs> it's it's on there. If you look me up, it's it's in there. I've pictured it many times. <laughs> a man with nipples for eyes. Ooh. Recently, though, I <laughs> who isn't <laughs> looking for that? Right. Recently, though, I've just been getting into like minimal line work with with like ink on old paper. A lot of found object stuff. I, I don't have like a studio space right now, and I'm rearranging the house, so I'm working like everywhere i can but like some of the stuff that's big i can't do so i'm kind of working small this month Mm-hmm. and are, you've been selling a lot of shit lately right i wish no <laughs> not really i thought didn't you have some events lately you sold a bunch of small stuff uh yeah some prints i sold some prints uh but that was just of like a lot of necrocolor stuff and i made some religious candles that had the necrocolor stuff on them that's cool that was good. Yeah, but those people sold went well. for those, yeah. yeah. Those sold pretty well. But, you know, it's not like I made any money to really speak of. I just fucking had to shell out almost 800 bucks, which was like every penny I have to get my car fixed. And, and now I literally have $4. Yeah. Like, I literally, that's like I have $4. <laughs> right now I have like negative 200. <laughs> Ooh. How'd you, you have, you're talking like credit? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have credit cards. No, uh, my boyfriend has a credit card. I uh, so you just have debt. Not. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so, I still can't imagine doing that. Having a credit card? Yeah, it's no, it's too nuts. I, I it's, it's, I'm way too poor, and I've been way too poor. I have no discipline with money. I'm a cash only business. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I, 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 I have no business 
having access to any amount of money whatsoever <laughs> that I don't have in my pocket. It's not going to work out. Plus, it's not just like credit where it's like you can just pay it later. It's like you instantly owe more than what you're paying for to buy what you need. So unless it's something you really fucking need, there's no reason that I can see to do that. Like that's my end of life plan basically is to take out a bunch of credit cards when I'm like, well, I'm going to die in like two years. Yeah. Take out a bunch of fucking credit cards, treat myself well, and then drop dead and never pay them back. Yeah. Because what are they going to do? I'm dead. Yeah. But after if, your family. I don't really have any family. Then they won't. My mom's not going to be around. Um, the only way I could see doing it is if you have a fucking rock solid idea that you need a little startup cash or something like that, you know. I think that's how gotta, Spike Lee got started. Yeah, some you need a couple credit cards to get your hot dog stand going and you know it's going to work or whatever. I could see doing something like that. But uh, as far as it just being part of my life, nah. Cash. Do, do the right <laughs> thing. That's right. The movie Do the Right Thing was completely funded on credit cards. Was it really? Yeah. Hmm. Spike Lee, that's how he got his start. He just took out a bunch of credit card. Just like based, you know, bet on himself, basically. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm, I don't have an idea that good yet. Yeah, I'm not getting any fucking credit cards anytime soon. Yeah, no credit cards for me. All right, also, well, like, welcome to the show. Finally, we have some fucking people here. Hi. If you guys, uh, If you guys want to call in and... Uh, Talk some shit with us, 630-599-RUBS, 630-599-RUBS, and we're sitting here with our old pal, Matt Gear. What? The the topic I wanted to talk about, I remember now. Um, oh. If you remember I, when we when you picked me up when my car broke down earlier this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> earlier this week, I was driving, we, we, uh, me and my gal come around the corner, uh, <laughs> and and we see this uh, this lonely figure walking up the hill. And as we got closer, we noticed it was old Matt Gear trudging along, and uh, <laughs> we said, "Hey, hello, Matt. What are, you, what are you doing there on the side of the road?" And he said, "Well, <laughs> he said, here's a funny thing that just happened. I was at the gas station, and my car, the automatic locks respond to uh, other people's lockers, like one out of three times. So some some lady locked his keys in his car when he got out. Yep." Because she she used her fucking her thing to to lock her car, oh, and his man. keys were in his car. What? I knew it happened too, and uh, I like tried to wave her down to get her just to like stop and just do it again. Mm -hmm. And she was gone. So then, like, I asked a bunch of other people, like, "Hey, do you have a happen to have a you know the kiosk kind where it just unlocks with a button?" And I got some people to try, and and out of those people. None of their shit worked. So like, I, it, it's happened to me before, <laughs> where like my locks go on and off real quick in parking lots and stuff from other people's because mine's been ripped out. That's crazy. So I was gonna walk home, so get my else, spare key. Somebody Luckily, else's have, thing you know, locked his close. keys in his car. <laughs> so we're like, all right. So we drove him. So we drove him back to his house and got his spare keys. And then, so what? We were talking about a what? I don't well, even remember. Well, it, it, it was um, the topic of like, like a, a feminist friend of mine had put up a, a picture on Facebook about. Uh, how women should be able to go anywhere men can go topless they should be able to be topless too and i would totally agree yeah but then not? a bunch of people jumped on it and they were like oh it would wreck society men are like you know they'd go nuts oh i love tits like all these you know really the kind of comments you would expect of really misogynistic guys and like yeah. and i really just can't see a, a valid argument this guy was saying that like he's like well then i should be able to walk around with my dick out and it's like well no because you're <laughs> <laughs> your dick's a sex. I, I wrote your your dick is a sex organ. Breasts are not. Breasts are there to feed a baby. Like technically, they're not a sex organ. Like just because the West has sexualized them, and like maybe you're aroused by them, that doesn't matter. Like I think girls' feet are pretty. Girls can walk around barefoot though. Like you know, I'm not like oh, cover your feet. You're making me horny. <laughs> not in my fucking house. They can't. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Well, like whatever your kink is. Like you know, some guys just go nuts for like redheads, and it, that's it. You know, and like or whatever. You know, just it's an example. But mm -hmm. it's still a society. And like yeah, if a guy like it's not like you can just walk into Seven Eleven topless because a man can't do that either. But at a beach or anywhere it's appropriate. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I don't really see the problem with it either. Who gives a shit anymore? Right. We're really that yeah. uptight still, right. you know? Right. I mean, and that's the other thing, too. I think, like, what you're going to find is that 99.99% .99 of girls just aren't going to really want to do that anyways. Right. So, yeah. I mean, 
clothing is a pretty comfortable thing most of the time, you know? I don't, I like it. I, don't, I feel fucking would be like, feel unsafe running around in the woods naked. It'd be awful, you know? <laughs> I don't know why I'm in the woods. Well, that's anytime I <laughs> automatically when you imagine yourself, you're just in the woods. If I'm naked, I must be lost <laughs> yeah. in the woods. A, a bear took my clothes. Well, anytime that's happened to me, it's fun for a little while, but then you're right. You get cold and like, yeah, you want your clothes back. Like I've I've like run around naked in the rain on vacation at places and stuff, and it's like, yeah, this is fun for like 15 minutes. But then you're like, damn, the rain is cold. <laughs> or like whatever, like like you said, like you're not you're in the woods or like whatever. The cops could see you. I mean, there's various times I have different stories, but yeah, you, clothes are good. And here's another topic. Okay, here's one. Yeah, the importance of fashion, right? Like a lot of I get in this one with people a lot, and like yeah, like fashion's bullshit and whatnot, but. It does serve a purpose because in this society, which is based on snap judgments of what people are about, if you care how you dress, you give people the a, a brief impression of what you're about in a in a way. Right. Like I have friends who are like, well, I don't care about what I wear. Like I don't dress. And it's like, no, but you do. You're making conscious choices, and that is fashion. Yeah, yeah I agree with I guess that. So. I don't know. I never really have thought about fashion that much, and and maybe because you just, but maybe it just doesn't uh, is, appeal to me as like a, a, you know, the whole the, the whole fucking fashion world discussion and and what's what's in and out and stuff. Because I I've, I've always never cared about that either. But yeah, I've just kind of been for like what's been comfortable for me. But I guess yeah, that's part I mean, of you it. You like things and you don't like things, right? I was going to say that. No. Yeah, you're not wearing a leisure suit right now. Yes, I am. Like. You, how many times have you asked me if I like that hat that you're wearing right now? Because it's been more than once. No, I mean, because it's weird looking. <laughs> <laughs> but you have preferences. Beca- That's the thing. And plus, what- Andy, you guys actually had a conversation about your shirt earlier. Yeah. It's a dope shirt. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. And I guess I do really like stuff. Yeah, yeah. See, that's not true. See, I'm. I, 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 you have a preference on what kind of, what shape of jeans you buy mm. and whether they have holes or. If they're uh, regular blue or I don't if they're want brown blue, see so you have uh, yeah pre pre ripped shoes. Jeans, Are you kidding that me? That's bullshit. Yeah, you love shoes. You yeah, that's true. have to admit that you love shoes. Check this. Check these. I shoes know out. your shoes are awesome. Old oh, school, dude. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. I know these yeah. are cool. Yeah, I guess shoes. I do like uh, a little bit of fashion in my life. <laughs> See, I respect anybody that like really owns their shit. Like, like I like like those Mexican dudes who are like all cowboyed out. Like, I see those guys, and they <laughs> see like me. That? Well, like, I respect them for their, like, they're owning their shit. Like, when those guys see me out in the world, we always look at each other, and we, like, give each other, like, a cool guy nod. We're like, No, right? you don't get a cool guy I nod fucking from do. cowboy Mexicans. I fucking totally do. Do you really? I really do. Like, they're like, That's fuck cool. yeah, because I give them the nod. I'm like, dude, fuck yeah, you're rocking that fucking shit. Because they are, <laughs> with their fucking boots right. and shit. It's I always think look. it's hilarious when I, I used to, you know, work in restaurants a lot. And, like, guys I would work with all the time, once in a while, you know, you'd see them either, like, on their way to go out or maybe coming back from somewhere. Or you see them out somewhere and they'd be doing that cowboy thing, you know, or like... Whoa, that's how you dress outside yeah. of work? Like, I never would have guessed that. You I've know? only seen you in sweatpants. Everybody's got, like, chef pants and yeah. fucking, you know, the, the work shirt on and stuff. And then, like, you're a cowboy? Like, holy shit. That's always very strange after when you've known the guy for, like, a year and a half and you had no idea he was a cowboy. You <laughs> want to know somebody's a cowboy <laughs> right up front. Yeah, yeah. They, they should be up front about that stuff. It's like being a sex offender. They should register. You should need yeah. to register as You're a cowboy. You're a registered cowboy, I'm They afraid. should be required to inform people uh, that they work with. A little cowboy hat sticker on their front window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know. I'm sorry, sir. We can't hire you. It says here yeah. that you were a cowboy at one point. Yeah, because, I mean, it is a little shitty because what what point is there being a cowboy in Chicago in 2015? I mean, it's like, that's a little, that's a little, uh, you know, it's it's pushing it as far as, like, me believing that you really feel natural doing that. Because, you, you know, boots and jeans like that, it's no good for walking around in the city, you know? Oh, man, and you cowboy see, boots are so uncomfortable. Yeah, and you see the guys, like, and, and a lot of the bars, you know, and a lot of them are in the city. And then, like, the big, like, uh, you know, Mexican cowboy bars. It's total fashion. A lot of people know about this, right? I don't think we're blowing no, anybody's no, mind it's, here. No, it's totally But you'll see, like, a hundred of those guys hanging out at a bar, and, and 
it's not convenient or comfortable the way they're dressed. That's what kind of pisses me off about it. it go to Melrose Park, people, if you want to see what we're talking about. Just well, walk the, around to Melrose Park a little bit. Isn't while. it so goofy? Like, wouldn't you feel so, like, if everybody was dressed like you, but in just different colors? Like, basically a cartoon <laughs> well, where they were too lazy to design different I was different in Wicker outfits. Park the other day, and that's how I fucking felt looking yeah. at all the kids. I was like, man, I used to stand out. I used to, like... You know yeah. what I mean? And I was like, now I'm just fucking, you could, I could blend in. I could shoot somebody and like walk into this crowd and they'd be like, I don't know, guys in tight pants. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Skin, I don't know. I see a bunch of skinny guys in tight pants. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Right. They, they formed, in, <clears throat> they actually formed into a blob and rolled into a sewer drain. <laughs> um, but uh, that is, I guess, I guess that's true. I don't know, but. But that was my point is that like ultimately though everybody does kind of care about fashion more than they think whether you think you think about it or not. Like and I'm not talking about caring like what's in at any point in time. Like that's I guess that's fashion, but I mean more style. Like I like people's personal style. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like and there is thought that's put into that whether you yeah, realize it or not. Definitely. Unless your mom dresses you. Ah, that'd be cool. If your mom dressed you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cuz I, I would uh I would really like to like take clothing out of the equation, you know, like if it, well, not literally dressed me, but like if she bought my clothes for me, why don't you just buy a bunch of those like Dickies jumpsuits? Yeah, I have one. I wear it to paint in. That'd be cool. Yeah. I, I, I have worn those around the house. They get really hot really quick, but, uh, make it into cutoffs. I could get, I could just wear I could I could make a bunch of air holes in it. Yeah, put air holes in it. That's what you got to do. They make ones of varying thickness, you know, like the one I, I've got two of them. I've got one that's denim, and then I've got one that's, that's what just, she said. Uh, uh, oh, there's an interesting topic: diphalia. What's that? Diphalia. Look it up. It's when you're born with two working penises. Really? Oh yeah. Get out of town. It, it happens. Get. Do I have to look that up? Diphalic. Yeah, as in two peni. <clears throat> you know, Some I don't people know. it comes out better than others, but there's people who just have two perfect dicks, one next to each other. What's the advantage, I guess? Isn't that just, um, yeah, I guess I, I, but like. I always wondered if you come with one, right? Like, how, you, how, how are you, what angle are you supposed, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, if you came with one, could you then come out of the other one immediately after? Or is it like once you blow your load. You got to wait that like five minutes before you can come again, like a normal person. Well, yeah, because you don't have two sets of balls. That's what I mean. Is that what it's tied into, though? Unless one ball goes to each penis. I don't know. I, that's, it brings up many <laughs> wait, wait, questions. Let's see a picture of it. It brings up many questions. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a real thing. Are those real? Those look like two to- completely mismatching penises, I though. I said they're not always perfect. Sometimes one's like- bigger than the other one. Some people, though, are lucky. And Ew, just- what the fuck is wrong with all these people? These are all disgusting. Yeah. They're- what does that one have coming out of it? I don't know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> These are some pretty raunchy pictures of it, though. There's yeah. It's just a Google image. image so there's there's a, yeah, the, the there's Google a, wants you to see all the most disgusting ones. There's They're a all, yeah. like, kid in Mexico shit, like. that they show a lot when you look that up, because I've told other people about it, and there's a better picture of like some Mexican kid who's got two perfect, like just normal dicks, one next to each other, totally normal looking, other than the fact that there's two. Those look kind of like those are. All right. So if you have two penises, though, like what kind of position are you getting into? Like they're too close together, really, to do a whole lot of cool shit with two girls. It's gonna be probably more frustrating than anything. There's a couple porn actors that are <clears throat> diphallic. You can look it up and see how they I'm work it. This. Nah, I can't. I can't either. Honestly, no. Check it out. It's real. And there are porn movies, yeah, like I said, and see how they work it because those. I think there's three that I've seen, and like these guys kind of handle their shit differently. And how does it work? That's like like the exact mechanics I'm confused about. Like I said, like would you, if you have an orgasm with one, because in any of the movies I've seen, they're like double penetrating with it, so it's at the same time when they when they come. Right. But if you were, you know, in theory, to be like, I'm just going to use Lefty here. <laughs> I'm going to come with this, and now immediately at you with Righty. Uh, no. Does that the, work? The or? pipes. Because, no, the pipes split. The pipes come from the balls, all right? Now, they go. the balls combine into one main ball pipe, and it goes up to the penis pipe, all right? And then, <laughs> and then the penis pipe slit, 
So the penis split? pipe is going to split right at where the penis is split, yeah, I think. I guess. So I think the cum is going to go, you know, unless you were to pinch off one. Ugh, that'd be uncomfortable, though, I would think. You know, you were to pin- <laughs> pinch one off and and redirect it up the other one <laughs> to get, like, more, <laughs> to get more, uh, like, pressure, pressure on it, you yeah. know, and uh, and get it to shoot farther, I guess. I mean, because, like, <laughs> probably probably that would be the curse of the of the two penis thing. Is that it would just all your orgasms would be really disappointing, oh, just like yeah, that's dribble the curse. out, just like <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the curse. Like everything is like it just yeah, just like dribbles out really like because it splits and loses all the pressure and it's just like oh. Uh, I think boom. I think the worst part of that would be uh, being basically condemned to live your life wearing sweatpants. Like, how are you gonna package that shit? No, you put one down each side, I guess. Uh, that would not be comfortable. I would think. But you got to wear. See, but I've I've always worn like pretty loose jeans that like you know a lot of people's jeans. You could be one of those guys that wear like your crotch almost at your knees. I'm wearing you know panties, I mean? man. Yeah, I know you're in different a different breed. <laughs> but like you could do anything with your pants. You could have uh you know you could wear some really low pants and just have your two penises flapping around in the middle all the yeah. time. <laughs> I guess you know. So I think it would suck. Pants aren't pants aren't like they used to be. I know? think it would suck. <laughs> my friend, I have a, I won't use his name because I don't think I don't know if he'd want me to be like my friend. But well, maybe he would. He probably wouldn't actually care. But either way, I have a friend who has the biggest fucking cock. Like it's like coke can thickness, and like probably I don't know six inches or so, like average length. But it's fucking as thick as like a coke can. And he's told me that like no girl can even like get his cock in her mouth, and he and like. It just sounds like a curse to me. It, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Like, he scared girls off <laughs> with like, it. They're like, what am I going to do with that? Like, yeah, no that way. sounds terrible. Right? They're like, no fucking way. It's like a Coke can. No, thank you. So what are you saying? That, like, what what a lot of people think would be their Right. Like, oh, I wish fantasy. I... Yeah, right. Like, like, John Holmes. Like, <clears throat> I wish I had two fucking uh, giant dicks. And like every, every girl you <laughs> well, meet is just like, all right, I'm going to go meet one of the other 9 billion guys who yeah. has a normal penis. Well, John Holmes, man, like everybody's always like, oh, his, you know, yeah, he had like a huge dick, but he could never get his cock completely hard because it was so big. If you look at any movies he's in, he's not even like stiff. He's just like kind of pushing that huge rope. You know, it's like it's like a yeah, he's not he, he's not like plowing anybody with it. It's like a uh, just one of those. It's like an appendage. It's just a. It's just a <laughs> tragedy, you know. It's like one of those curses. It's one of those old lessons in life. Anytime you you get like, uh, you know, something really great or whatever, you get your wish. There's always this fucking, you know, this catch to it. It's like in the you can have it. You can have a ten inch penis, but like. Yeah, it's just gonna be kind of fun. <laughs> no one's gonna like it. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be okay. Once in a while, someone will really like it, but most of the time, it's gonna be just kind of awkward. You know. Yeah. So I feel bad that's for your people deal. that get it surgically lengthened. That's a thing. Oh yeah, and what they do is they cut the tendons What's that it made hold of? it to the bone. Nothing. All they do is they cut the. There's two tendons that like you know when you get a hard on, it points up. That's because there's two tendons that run up the length of it. They simply cut those, which makes your shit droop down by a good inch. So now when you get a boner, like it doesn't go up like that anymore. It's still hard and you can use it and stuff. But like it makes it just look bigger. And then there's also the other way where they second. cut into it. They're putting so explain that one more time. There's two Put, tendons right. that connect your pelvic bones. Right, yeah, I know about those. They simply cut them and then all of your yeah. like you know how actually your Wait. Your, you gotta be. Uh, it runs up the no. back to your to your anus, like all of it goes slides about an inch forward. Right. So, <laughs> oh, okay. So it just pushes the whole thing out. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. I and but now it's like a floppy dog's ear. But it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't get erect the same way. Well, no, because your your no, those tendons have been down. cut. Yeah, it still gets hard, but it's like it's you just do like that big... for you do that for one inch. Uh, yeah, I guess you get like an inch or so. Jiminy Christmas. That's what a penis lengthening is. So you got to be like fucking two inches to really want that. People get them who are above average and then they mm. like want their cock to just be huge, I guess. I, I don't know. Man, that seems fucking... How can you be... See, no, you... you, you there's, there's another one, too. Isn't there, isn't there other solutions to like... 
if you're that insecure about your penis, like there's so many better things than cutting <laughs> than cutting the tent. Like buy a sports car, <laughs> or or just like or just like try to find like. 18 year olds who have never had sex before and then like brainwash one and, and marry her. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then co- to convince her that you have the biggest dick in the world. There, I'm just saying there's better options. Or talk, yeah. to, <laughs> talk to girls in real life if that's what you think. I think you'll find most girls really aren't concerned with the size of your prick. No, but I'm saying if you gotta have it that way you just take just one right out so. of high school. And we all have things about ourselves we <laughs> need to just accept is what I always say. You know, I, I don't sure. know. And yeah, if you want to make it fatter, then what they do is they inject fat into it. No joke. <sighs> Ew. God, I could see. I, that's that's the craziest. Th- I could never get into fucking like injecting and cutting up my uh, my my penis in any kind of way. I, I wish think. I I wish I wasn't circumcised. Like I always. I've How do you feel about mom. that? A girl pointed out to me <clears throat> a couple years ago. I was talking to, and she said, she asked me this. She's like, well. You know, are you? She asked me if I was circumcised because she was like talking about it. I'd you be know, like why don't you check? Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. I'm <laughs> not sure. Cover? Take a look. I'll bitch. fucking. Well, no, I just feel like I'm not sure. Why don't you tell me? Like, Pee on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stoned. Ah, uh, so I'm like, yes, madam, I am. As a matter of fact, she's like, well, you know, did anyone ask you if they if they could do that? I'm like, well, no, you know, and I thought it was like a weird question at first. And then I was like, wait a second. That's kind of a good point, actually. Um, Have you ever seen the table <laughs> yeah. that they that they you know, tie male babies down to to do it? No. It but looks torturous. It seems like it. And then I started to think about it. Like, it seems like maybe that is kind of a nasty way and a, and a, and a shitty, like, trauma to start your You're, life off yeah. with for like probably the most sensitive important part of your body my you know? friend from like, ireland sean was like now i see why americans are so pissed off all the time and like weird <laughs> sexually and stuff yeah. just fucking angry yeah. people are just like hate fucking in hotels right <laughs> like, seriously because your earliest <laughs> memory is just being strapped to a table and some doctor Dude, sipping at your fucking dick in, in europe guys are guys are picking up girls on vespas with flowers and going out and drinking wine and fucking on hills sides in the moonlight we're fucking going in booths and jerking off <laughs> fucking yelling at them behind windows <laughs> pretty much yeah Stop cutting our dicks i guess i don't know yeah seriously yeah i never thought about it that way but it is pretty fucking barbaric it's yeah i mean it's creepy i mean i've always thought it was kind of creepy but it desensitizes you too Guys supposedly who are uncircumcised. Well, and they when, when I've asked girls in the past, I get like a mixed uh, feedback though. Some of them will go, "No, it has to be circumcised. It's creepy." And They're American some, though. Some of them say, "I don't give a shit," you know. But um, American girls just aren't used to it. I'm always like, if that was the norm, you would even even you'd be like, "That's what a cock looks like." Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be weird. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It looks the same hard. I'd be like, don't worry, baby. It looks the same hard, you know, like (laughs) just because it looks like an elephant trunk right now. Right. I mean, yeah, I'll be honest. Like if you just want to go for like pure aesthetics, you know, like, yeah, I prefer the way it looks. Yeah. okay, But like. And like, I've never like like I don't know, I've never done anything with anyone that was uncircumcised, but yeah, it seems like uh, it would be a little bit more. Or, or even maybe less work. I don't know. Because there's a lot of skin there. Yeah, who knows? But, I mean, I can't imagine that there's nothing to be said for, for like, that fucking immense trauma right at the beginning of your life. What kind of effect? Psychologically? That, yeah. I would think some fucking very bad shit. Yeah. Nothing good is going to come of that. I mean, or does it just kind of toughen you up? No, get you ready for things. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't believe like Either whatever way. doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I don't think that's true. I, I don't. So they say they say the cleanliness thing, and then other people go, "Nah, that's bullshit." Well, you know, it's, if you bathe every day like modern people do, yeah, like it really, or even every other day or so, it really shouldn't be a problem. So it's like people that like don't eat pork anymore because of you know uh, the fucking. Shitty, shitty uh, bacteria that existed a thousand, two thousand years ago, whatever. And yeah, and we're living by the penis cutting rule that had to do when people bathed once a month. Yeah, basically. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Well, because otherwise, yeah, like 
um, a, a fluid called smegma will build up under the foreskin. Yes, that's true. I've heard of that too. Yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking disgusting. So gotta, I mean, but if you shower, it has its own name, and they get like yeah. a big bubble and shit. Oh, ugh. I don't know. It's ugh. just it's kind of <laughs> nasty. It's like it looks gross, but. I mean, if you fucking bathe normally like a normal person in America does, or any modern person in any civilized nation, it's not really an issue, I wouldn't think. And if it is really medically an issue, then you can get it done. But I don't think we should automatically be doing it to infants or you know babies the second they're born basically that's a funny thing too that it is just so like i think because i you know i would think i think probably most people i know are circumcised you oh, know yeah. well especially and our it, age yeah yeah my I mean, mom it, said nobody fucking asked her when i was born she was like nobody said shit to me is that true they just, they just do it, did huh? it? yeah it, it does seem just like a pretty uh you know just it's it's run-of-the-mill just compulsory thing to do at this point just like yeah, we got to for if, health. If you look it Everybody up, though, it. however, um, it doesn't always go well. Uh, sometimes they do it, they take off too much, which can cause problems later in life. Sometimes they completely destroy a baby's genitals and they have to remove it all. Uh, and that Whoa. that happens. Yeah, look it up. It fucking happens pretty often, actually. Um, so anybody so. whose shit is normal and circumcised, we're actually pretty lucky. Like it's spelled with a C. <laughs> We're trying to spell circumcision. It's spelled with a C. It's. <laughs> I got it. Close I enough. think we got it. Oh wait, but then I didn't. Yeah, you got it. But yeah, it doesn't always go right. I don't. I don't remember what like the percentage is and stuff. But it, it's more often than you you would want to hear that it it actually goes really bad. Yeah, I believe that absolutely. Well, think about it. Think about how many of them they do a day if they're doing it to every single baby that's born. I mean, and not everybody that does it in this country still is even a doctor. Rabbis still fucking do it. Ew, really? How? A moil comes and does it, and I don't know if they actually put their mouth on the baby's junk anymore. Dude, that is the fucking that. Oops, that is the. Uh, I don't think they do that in America. Uh, no, that is the original tradition. I forgot about that shit. That I is the, have never heard this. Look that like up this. real quick. That is the that is the original the moral, uh, yeah. tradition was that they would suck the fucking like blood off of the tip of the penis, right? Yeah, it's the, to they would thought that saliva was actually like gonna heal it of a baby. They yeah. would suck a baby's dick. Yeah, they suck the moil. Sucks they would the baby's cut a part of a, uh, of the baby's dick off, and then they would suck the baby's dick. They don't do that in America anymore, though. I don't think because in New York three years ago, a moil had done that, and the baby's penis became infected and had to be removed. <sighs> what kind of a fucking scum weirdo doesn't understand by now that you shouldn't do that? Well, it's religion. <laughs> it's tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Same fucking bullshit. You know, like. The same reason that there's a there's like a half standard for a lot of fucking religious behavior. You know? Oh, it's um, just been that way. What are you finding over there? Some Orthodox <clears throat> groups still use their mouth to draw blood after cutting the foreskin. Oh, God, I'm fucking, I'm like, <laughs> I'm I, I'm like retching over yeah, here. Yeah, like this, this is, is not, fucking horrifying. I um. Oh, what a bunch of stupid creeps. God damn it. And the guy is probably, like, he probably has terrible breath, too. Wait. Uh, in, <laughs> in March of 2012, a baby died because it contracted herpes after an uh, Orthodox moil put his mouth on its penis. And then a year later, two more infants got herpes the same way. Oh, that's a great way to start your life. No, that's totally worth it, though. Right. You, yeah. Herpes. You wouldn't want to have hygiene problems. Yeah, right, no. right. <laughs> and also something about God wouldn't love you if you didn't let the... Is it really a super... Oil? Is it part of their... Like, did it really become inter intertwined with their, like, strict religious requirements? Or is it just still kind of just a general practice because of the perceived cleanliness? Well, uh, you mean... I mean, I guess everybody has their own reasons. Like, is it like yeah. a wacky religious rule is what I mean? It must, it like yeah, I think it's more like a rule. I don't think it's all about the the cleanliness. I think hmm. that's what... Um, I think most religions ignore the, like, metaphors and the reasons why they do things and get really just hung up on doing it, basically. And 
yeah. lose sight of what the. Well, that's what I'm was. saying. There's a lot of there's right. a lot of wacky kind of religious rules like that that well, are just still going on. In there's a, female um, circumcision, which is still going on rampantly in other countries. Yeah, like, and that's just fucking evil. Like that is isn't that so more, but evil. isn't that more about like t- removing their ability to enjoy? Yeah, yeah. Sex so that they never so that cheat they, on their. They're because they're basically property. So they're basically just physical, like yeah. sex slaves, but with with no mm-hmm. with no possibility of enjoyment. Right. Good yeah. luck ever having an orgasm. Yeah, that sucks. And a lot of women where, where, die from that. Where like, do they do that? Uh, in lots of places, especially it's where Africa. there's Muslims. Yeah, African Muslims in the Sudan and shit. They do okay. it a lot. Yeah. In in Pakistan, I think, and in in Saudi Arabia, they still do it. Yikes. Our freedom-loving friend, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> Those people, man, that government sucks. In Saudi Every Arabia. government sucks. No, but really, the Saudi Arabian government really sucks. Yeah, they are, well, and... I, I mean, I'm glad I don't live in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I will say that. Yeah, I know, I know, but like... Are they are they a lot worse than our government? Oh, yeah. We don't behead people and stone them and shit. <laughs> Well, maybe we do, but not the way they do it. That's all I, guess I could say. We don't, they're we living don't, in medieval times. Right, already. right. No, just I've seen, I think it's toned down lately, but there were videos maybe like 10 years ago of like huge government public executions. They're, they they're executing there. a guy this week for having a fucking blog. Oh, are they still doing it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I've seen, but I have seen a lot of those videos where it's like stadium stuff and it's like a guy with a giant fucking uh, like like Aladdin sword, a scimitar <laughs> comes, yeah, comes comes walking out and chops a guy's head off, and it takes like three fucking swipes, you know. Mm. But uh, hey, they, a neck is thick, man. I mean, but yeah. so okay, so they're doing that. But I mean, come on, we don't really have to roll through all the heinous shit we're doing. To no, I don't know. No, I'd hate, I'd hate know. to really take the time to weigh which of our governments was worse. I can't, I, I can't I do autom- think the automatic- Saudi Arabian is a little worse. Yeah. You, no, I, and you might, you might very well be right. I just really hate our government. We, I do too, man. I really do too. But like, I got to say, like in Saudi Arabia, we couldn't be doing exactly what we're doing right now, which is just being on the radio. And- yeah, yeah. No, that's true. But I mean... We have I guess, a lot more freedom here. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I mean, all of that is true, but there's, I guess, you know, I think the amount of stuff that happens behind the scenes and the amount of like clandestine, fucking black ops stuff that then influences those like evil regimes around the world and puts them in power might almost balance it out. You know, so oh, I, I, I don't know. That's what I was saying. I'd hate to fucking even have to really figure it out. It would be a long, long and arduous equation to try to fucking get through because yeah like we we have you know had ties to fucking putting all of those people in power um i I don't really know actually know about the history of saudi arabia to be honest but you know what i mean about a lot of the fucking evil shit like that that does happen yeah well we've i mean a lot of the people we're fighting now are people that we armed in the 80s and 90s yeah i mean even even um Osama bin Laden, you know, like he, we gave him money and weapons to fight the Russians. Sure, of course. And then got surprised when, like, oh yeah, he doesn't like our like imperial government stepping all over him, and now now he's a terrorist, you know. And like, no matter what you believe, the truth is on that. And I have no opinion, even I don't know the truth. Yeah, I I think it's but, uh, I think that he's I, kind of just another player in a fucking a big theater scheme. But you know, I heard he's or, like a living well in a bunker somewhere. I've heard all kinds of theories. Like, anything's no, possible. I don't know. I don't really give a shit one way or another because I just don't trust anything that they tell us. And I think the most likely thing is that since the CIA was such a integral part of his rise to power, I think it's more than likely. That he never broke ties with them, and and that the whole thing was part of a larger operation. So well, you this know, whole that's, like mysterious burial at sea, and there's no body, and that's what I'm. I mean, the no whole the, and the whole thing has been so just blatantly theatrical. You yeah, know? and and it's it's been like he's he's the fucking the the movie villain of our generation that they needed. I mean, and it, and again, it just satisfies this dumb part of the psyche. Uh, of most of the populace that's that needs that right. rise and fall of a villain okay and that's you know that serves so many purposes for for the establishment and 
I just don't. And he was just again seeing that he was created by the CIA. That's all I need to know to know something's a lie forever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. it doesn't just become true and then what the media says about him is true for the next 20 years yeah no <laughs> it's it's just opposite a, it's yeah it's gonna it's gonna keep being a lie so i don't believe much of the main story on, on osama bin laden i don't honestly know when he died or is alive or if he was a multiple actors or fucking all the different things that people say you know mm-hmm. i don't really i don't know all i do know is that the main the mainstream story is gotta be fucking yeah but why all all i know is that i don't know fucking shit that's what i always say like i don't know that's the only thing i'm sure of is that like i don't i don't know like (laughs) i could i can speculate a lot though what do you think about uh the people that are dropping dead in russia that it seems putin's knocking off and being like i don't know anything about that last i heard putin was missing no he showed up now oh did he yeah He 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 just he was just like rumors I'm fine. He actually came out and said that, or someone said that on his. No, behalf? that's what he came. That's the first thing he came out and was oh. just like, "Wow, rumors really spread." Like, I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> it's like I can't fucking just uh, right. kick, was, kick back and, and relax for a couple days. Right. Like, <laughs> he thinks I'm fucking dead. He's like, I was gone for five days. Like, what the fuck, basically. Um, uh, so, what are you talking about with disappearances? Well, no, not disappearances. People are are dying. Like, oh, dying. Like being, you know, there's that. Uh, God, I can't That's think different. of their names. Uh, but there was one guy who was like a big, um, you know, not. Uh, a friend of Putin. See those that bong hit just scrambled my fucking eggs. Dude. No, this is the bong show. It's really <laughs> fucking difficult to yeah. be to be in here. Like I, I can't believe we've been able to even stay halfway yeah. through this. You know, it's been great. I, I again, you don't smoke bongs in a couple of years and you forget. Like shit, really is is <laughs> way different than than normal smoking. Yeah, I haven't had a bong hit in probably like three years. Uh, so that rocked my world. <laughs> that. <laughs> pinpointer thing <clears throat> that i got from metal detecting is fucking badass yeah you if find you guys some stuff? I, I was talking about it on the last show come through my yard with it i should you live on another old property yeah around here. you'll find stuff um so i was talking about it on the last show i got that little like it's like basically like a little wand that you stick down in the ground to like pinpoint objects and it's fucking it changes the whole fucking game dude i'm i'm finding treasure 100 percent this summer I'm finding yeah. I'm finding some serious shit because I went out I just went out and like tested it out and it completely changes the experience. I'm fi- I'm finding things like immediately now. Well, you we know? should go to the or Indiana Dunes and dig up all the lost children. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they're wearing rings. That's what I mean. You know, get their get their gold teeth and stuff. I don't know. All, yeah, all the kids buried out there with gold teeth. Well, dig up kids, dead kids and, you know, and, uh, and old suck their rings and off yeah. with our mouth. Because you know, there's those. <laughs> There's those sinkholes on Mount Baldy, you know. You oh, yeah. You can't even go on it right now. Oh, really? I wanted to go to the Indiana Dunes now that it was getting warm, and I looked it up, and I was like, oh, the Mount Baldy, they were like, oh, it might be open by summer. Yeah, it's like they're quicksand pockets. Big ones, though. Yeah, they like just suck you in. I remember little ones when I was there last. Like They would go up to your knee. Oh, really? I don't think I've ever experienced that. That would be the worst. It was wild. You'd be like, whoa, but I guess that's kind of scary if you got into like a big one, yeah. Well, yeah, and if it was um, if it was big enough to get you, right. I don't know, that would be probably the worst way to die. Yeah, that'd be bad. It'd be up there, because you'd be aware of it. And you'd, I guess what would kill you would be suffocation then, yeah. right? Like, yeah, that's a pretty brutal way to go. I that's don't want that. Brutal. No. I'll skip the dunes, thank you. I'm still really dying in a sinkhole is the I'm, worst way to die. In, well, in like a dry quicksand. Mm, nah, because you'll be quick. It'll be pretty quick. You'll probably lose it in about three minutes of incredible well, suffering. Oh we're God. we're we're all five foot above adults. We're not going to fall into a sinkhole. It's more like for little kids that are getting. <laughs> I'm only five. I'm five foot three quarters of an inch. Really? Are you yeah. really? Yeah. Damn. You're pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> How tall are you, Vinny? Uh, like 5'11". All right, you're, like you're taller than me, man. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit taller. I'm not sure because... I'm 5'10". I haven't measured myself in a while, and I think I'm still growing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I know your feet, ears, and nose never stop growing. No Mine? Way. 
everyone years wow. <laughs> everyone's like the it's slow and everything but like i wear like i used to wear a size nine in most shoes you know i'm mm-hmm. now these days in my late 30s i find i usually need like a nine and a half do you think it's possible that over time the size of shoes has decreased very very slightly in an effort to no, save no. costs no same, no same shoes same like these are new combat boots but these are corker and jump boots just like i used to wear in high school these are a nine and a half, but in high school, I comfortably wore a nine. And I'm not any taller now. I'm not convinced. Were you, were, were you like one of the boots and trench coat kids in high school? No trench coat. No? Boots. Just boots. What did you wear in high school? What were you like? Um, I, my hair color was pretty much in flux all the time. I, it was, I had a the green... What does that mean? means it was different all the time. <laughs> it was different all the time. When I was a freshman, I had a green mohawk. And then when I was a sophomore, I had like purple, purple Liberty Spikes most of that year. And when I was a junior, I had like bright, bright orange, like hot orange Liberty Spikes. And then I had a Trihawk and then I got expelled. And then you didn't have hair after that? After that, honestly, no. I started just shaving my head and stuff. Oh. I told you that story when I had to shave my head because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, of, of the lice. Mm-hmm, oh, right. And then I just kept it that way for a while, and and you know, then yep, I looked like yep, Sid Vicious yep, in my yep, mid twenties. Yep, yep, I just had yep, black yep, hair. Yep, 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 yep. And clothing right, wise, right, yeah, right, I wore. Right, uh, right, right, I I owned right, one pair of right, boots. Right, 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 right. Andrea, what did you do in high school? Uh, I used to wear thrift store T-shirts that were from like the fourth annual holiday get together for the. Simpson family. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, like that's the, real hilarious. Like yeah, like oh yeah, this obscure like uh, the county <laughs> fair from 1982. Look at this guy. <laughs> hey, uh. where even is that? <laughs> yeah, they didn't know this town. <laughs> yeah, um, I wore a lot of those. I uh, I had my hair every single color of the rainbow, and I also tended to cut it myself for a long time. Oh, that was big. I remember doing that too. Yeah, yeah cutting it real short. Um, I had, like, where it was long in front and short in the back, and I had it in a checkerboard pattern with oh, blue cool. and purple. Very cool. Right. Um, <laughs> Every, everything you ever did. I'm looking to make fun of you a little bit here. What, what, what else did you have? <laughs> You're supposed to open up a little bit about how kind of, like, dumb you were. Come on. Was I dumb? Yes. Well, I don't know. Was. I oh was. Yeah, I was. I Jesus was like. Jesus Christ. Come on. I, Is that it? I tried to be a stereotype, you know. See, look, I'll show you what I mean. All right. When I was in high school. I used to go to school in pajama pants and no shoes with my hair cut by myself and like a homemade t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> I was horrible looking. <laughs> like, See, I, I would have like, respected I never, you for your originality, though. I would have been like, that cat's somebody I want to be friends with. Honestly, that, that would have been my attitude. And it still is to this it day. Was, it was pretty <laughs> fun. But I, but I also, well, one of the worst things was I never would go outside then. So I was like extreme, like I'm naturally pale now. But I looked like I was going to die. I was like, at times, you know, just like a really (laughs) just pale, clammy, like awkward haired (laughs) idiot just walking around selling mushrooms at school. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, I I, I was the most obviously on drugs kid that there could have possibly ever been in in any school. And I I don't know how we (laughs) like. I guess, you know, your average teacher is just kind of like, eh, f- I don't need to give a fuck. I don't give yeah. a shit. I'm not looking at that guy. <laughs> I'm not going to pay attention to him because I <laughs> don't want to deal with it. And yeah. go then I, and then I got to go to the counselor thing and tell him what happened. And I want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to stay here. And, you know, it's, it, that's I guess that's what really all it is, right? Because yeah. for years I look back on it like, Dude, how did I always get away with always being on drugs in school? It's because no one gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> they don't care. I mean, I remember I would frequently, I would almost always smoke weed before I went to school, um, starting at like my junior year. Almost every day I would smoke weed before I went to school. And I never, I would never even like put in eye drops or anything. I had, I did not care about concealing the fact that I was on drugs. I wouldn't, I would just like smoke weed in the car on the way to school with my friends and then just like get out of the car all smelling like weed and looking all high and go into school. And nothing ever happened. Yeah, that's nothing. (laughs) I just mean, I had like the same thing. It was just like, there's no way they didn't notice. Here's a good story. One time, my friend Bill 
in high school, Bill Vos. <laughs> uh, he, he, we were sitting in English class. This was our first period class, by the way. And he had obviously had a bunch of whiskey and pills of, uh, of undescript nature. I don't know what he threw. But he threw up all over his, the front of his desk, right? Mm-hmm. Like, just like, it was like, Bleh. And it was just whiskey and pills. Just like real clearly. Just yeah, it was, it, was, it was like clearly like this is just booze and pills that this kid threw up. And, and like nothing, yeah, nothing happened. I mean, it was just, I remember I laughed, Bill laughed. Our teacher, Mrs. Ellsworth, who was like an old lady, was just like, oh, here's some paper towels, Billy. <laughs> like, seriously, it was like. Yeah, I did. I remember I, I tripped a couple times at school. And that was fucking oh, wild. I always left. I'd be like, I gotta get out of here now. No, you'd leave after an hour or two, but like that that initial time was was fucking hilarious. Like, cause, <laughs> and then eventually you'd be like, dude, I I can't be here. This is crazy. But uh, but how long could you hold out in school? On on I I a couple times ate mushrooms around like two hours before the end of the day or something, <sighs> and then. Yeah. By the time school got out, I'd be fucking oh, really man. tripping, you know. A, but uh, more than a few times, I would drop in the morning. LSD and yeah, I couldn't be there for more than an hour. Then I'd be yeah, like, I'd usually wait. I'd bring him with me and wait. But we used to tripping at school was like an initiation challenge with like me and some of my friends. Like everybody did it at some point. It seemed like um and uh or at least for you know for a little while. I remember at one point actually I was in a class in one of those rooms that was like a half circle. It's in like a little band room that was like a half circle riser situation and. A friend of mine was on the opposite like side of the thing from me, and I had a bag of mushrooms, and I was literally doing this thing when the teacher would turn to one side. I was holding up mushrooms one by one so like everybody could see them and eating them like real obviously, you know, <laughs> dropping them in my mouth and chewing them. And when she would turn back around, I'd hide them, you know. And for some reason, I don't know why I was so like reckless like that. Nobody said anything, and it's like it's not like pot you know like i you would think maybe one of the fucking like really sort of square kids would have said something because it's like actual drugs maybe they didn't know what it was kids I were guess, cooler but, when we were in high school than yeah, they are now seriously now they true. would rat on each other now it would be a thing fucking even yeah the lowliest like nobody square, said shit dude. nobody ever said nobody shit said shit and you know what else too though like we weren't like jock bullies but if somebody had told on me for that like we probably would have done something to them as a group you know what i yeah. mean like it something would have happened and that's probably <laughs> just like an understanding amongst people back then you know but like nobody said anything I was uh, ate a bag of mushrooms in front of everybody, like theatrically holding them up and shit. Like, Here's one: Did you get in fights a lot in high school? No, no, never really. I had like protectors, or else I probably wouldn't have like survived high school. Yeah, no, we didn't really have that shit going on. My high school was just a lot of drugs and a lot of like, you know, partying and shit. And there just wasn't like a lot of fighting. It, a lot of people from the same neighborhoods have known each other for years and shit. It wasn't that, you know. Where, where'd you go? LT, when I went, was very violent. There were a lot of fights. People always wanted to beat me up for no fucking reason other than just because I was, you know, different on whatever level. You know what I mean? But luckily, I had a few, like, metalhead friends that were, like, big, scary metalhead kids who were older than me, and they were like, don't fuck with that dude. And, like, they, they'd be like, oh, sorry, you're friends with, with fucking De- I don't, Bob Death? Okay, like, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? Nobody really Bob talked Death? With- yeah, Bob Death. <laughs> that was the name of your friend? That was Bob's name, yes. He was, like, <laughs> he was really tall and, uh, like, had black hair and just, you know, looked like your stereotypical, like, mean metal guy. Yeah, yeah. And he was he was a year older than me, and yeah, I mean, a bunch of I remember times. the guy, there was a guy at our school that was, like, one year older than us, and uh, and he was, like, fucking six and a half feet tall, wore, like, a giant, like, leather coat, and, like, had, like, black hair, like, was, like, the metal dude, you Same know what guy, I mean? probably, and, like, like yeah, right. almost, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, I, you know, I think everybody probably has that, like, big fucking metal dude that everybody, and there's, like, folklore stories about him, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, people, like, exactly. so it was, like... Dude, I heard I like I heard he fucking knocked his mom out, you know, one time. It's like, what? Are you serious? Like he doesn't give a fuck, dude. I heard he, he just, drank cat blood. Yeah, like, right, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. His 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 mom told him like he he was grounded, he just fucking uppercutted her through the ceiling. It was crazy. You know, I was never I never was grounded. I never got what that meant. Like that was always something on TV to me. It means you can't go out. 
until you say you're sorry. I'd like get, I would like get arrested, go home, like straight him. out yeah. of getting arrested, and be like, "All right, well, I'm gonna go out now." And I would go out. Like, I never like. Yeah. See, we we had that a little bit when we were little kids, but by the time I was a teenager. I think my mom tried it on me one time when I was like 16. I was like, nah, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, I'm going. I'm not grounded. Um, and if you don't let me back in, you get arrested. So uh, I'll right, see you, you later. Figure, <laughs> you figure out how the game really works. Right. right. Yeah. I was your such, move. Well, there is, there is a point where you want your like you want your independence and your freedom so bad as a kid, and you don't care how much of a cocksucker you have to be. Because if you look back and you're like, God damn, was I a fucking asshole for a few years? I was just neglected. I've had to cook for myself, do my own laundry, all that shit since I was 10. Yeah, but there's a, there's a part. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of had a, like a similar situation of maybe not like that bad, but like we did a lot of like the maintenance around our house because our parents are drunks. My mom was just never around. (laughs) She was busy working. You know, yeah, it's Actually, not her fault. I'm just saying that, but it's a fact. Like I was alone, and I had to like learn to cook for myself. I always did my own laundry. Like I was always doing very domestic shit from a very early age. We did our own laundry. Yeah, but still pretty early. I still say there's a point that you get to about 16, where you're just like, I'm doing what I want to do. I yeah. don't care. Especially if you, because like we didn't live with our dad, so there was like nobody who could like physically stop you really from anything, and it was just kind of like. Hey mom, I love you. I'm sorry, but like I'm bigger than you now, and uh, I got to go. <laughs> and I want to do this. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'm. But out of respect, I would sneak out a lot when I <laughs> when I was like when I was still like 16, 17. I had a system. This was fucking hilarious. I we lived in this stupid fucking two story house that was less like. The, the window on the front, you know, on the second story just came out to about like two feet of heavily slanted roof. That was all you had. So if you climbed out the second story window in front, which is what I would do, you would have to just, wet, you know, hang on to the ledge on your way out. Get your feet on this, you know, whatever it was, two or three feet of shingles before the gutter, you know, that was like <laughs> at, you know, at this horrible <laughs> angle, very steep angle. And there was a pine tree that was just about as tall as the gutter was. So I would reach, this is a horrible system. I would hang onto the fucking ledge and I would reach my foot out till I could get it to the top branch of the pine tree. And then it took like this leap of faith where I would let go and slide down the roof and, <laughs> and like wedge my foot into the top of the pine tree this to stop myself. This only on a second story. Yeah. Why don't you just jump? Uh, because it was, ju- it was a little bit too high to jump. My cousin broke his thumb jumping oh, off okay. of there and I it kind of scared me off of it. My old We'd- bedroom was in it was a loft and I had like a balcony. Well, you, if you've seen my house, remember that little balcony that you can see that's like in the front of the house. That yeah. was my old bedroom. And I used to just jump out at night, like at like three no, in the morning. No, dude, I've jumped off roofs right. before, but this was, this the was day, a little too high. Climb, climb back up. You just get on this, on the ledge and pull yourself back up. So I, yeah, I had no problem doing that. But. Plus this one too, if you had jumped out the window, you would have just been jumping onto the top of a pine tree. Yeah, <laughs> that, would be, that would be bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you would do this like leap of faith, like thing that would jump onto the, you know, and I would kind of wedge myself against the pine tree and the roof and then work my foot down and then climb down the tree. All, st- all to not disrespect my mother. How would you get back in? <laughs> Climb the tree? Like- no, I would sneak back in the door because um, there was no there was no climbing back up. Why wouldn't um, you just sneak out the door then? Uh, because <laughs> because the most important part is getting away. Because it's not to disrespect her. It's because I actually wanted to get away with it. So the most important part is getting away because our mom was kind of crazy. And she would have chased me down the street in the car if she saw me, you know, because I was getting in a lot of trouble. I yeah. guess I guess uh, you know maybe she wasn't crazy, but I was I was getting arrested a lot and doing a lot of shit. So she definitely would have fucking chased me down the street in the car if she had seen me sneaking out. So it was more to probably get away with it. And then by the time you've been partying all night and it's like six in the morning and you're not sure if maybe you've been caught already, anyways, you're like, I think I'm just gonna you know, it, right. <laughs> you know, you're like fuck god damn it and who <laughs> wants to climb a tree when you're like drunk or fucked up like good luck no yeah you're <laughs> not doing that shit a, a couple times i would try stuff like uh you know set myself up somewhere like one one time i got locked out 
And so I, and I, and I slept in the backseat of the car and then I tried to be like, oh no, like I just couldn't sleep in my room and I wanted to get some fresh air. So I just, you know, I just came out here last night. You yeah. Know, was, like, I looked in the car. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I tried a lot of different things, but yeah, uh, that was, a uh, that was that, that was that couple of years where like, yeah, you didn't really get, I'm like, dude, I'm, 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 I'm getting my freedom. I'm getting, I'm walking <laughs> and that's it for Let me. me out. Yeah. Thanks for what you've done for me, ma. But, uh, things have changed around here. I, uh, one time I was coming back in after sneaking out at my dad's house and he had gotten up while I was gone. He had gotten up and moved into the living room from his bedroom and was watching TV and eating chips and I heard him crunching on the chips, but he was probably like half asleep or maybe entirely asleep. I'm not sure. Or maybe uh, entirely. Maybe lug, had a, lug, had a lug, cocktail lug, or two. Lug, lug, lug. Um, but I did not know the situation, <laughs> and I was young enough to be really scared of what might happen if he caught me coming back in. So I went to the dining room. So you can like see into the living room from the dining room, but it would have been from behind him. And I hid under the dining room table until I had heard him stop eating chips for like a really long time. And I was sure he was asleep again. And then I went upstairs. But it was like 45 minutes. I like sat under my dining room table waiting for him to stop eating chips and go back to sleep. And I listened to (laughs) an infomercial that was on the TV um, for the Bosco (laughs) hair transplant system. That where they take the hair from the back of your head and transplant it to the front of your head. That shit's baldness. pretty brutal too. Speaking of brutal surgeries that yeah. are unnecessary. The hair plugs. Oh, yeah. holy fuck. I think when people really find out when they're like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And then they look into it and they're like, oh, you mean you're going to like slash a bit of my scalp off and move it basically. Replant yeah. it and then sew it back over. <sighs> like, Ugh. yikes. Is hair yikes. that important? Like, uh, buy a wig. Super yikes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> buy a wig. <laughs> if it's that important. Fuck that. All right, I got one more for you. All right. Um, My friends and I were involved in this really horrific case in high school. And I don't really want to get too much into it, but it, you know, because it actually did cause some people a lot of pain. But, so that really wasn't the funny part, but it were, we were part of this really bad thing that involved, like, a house that got, you know, taken over one of those situations, you know. Where uh you ever heard of this? Where like no, what do you mean? Where like you well, know there some people in the house. Some people, oh, like, oh, okay. some people go on vacation. This happens from time to time. We're not the only people that ever did it, but it's some people go on vacation, and uh you know somebody, a friend of theirs, like breaks in or has a key and kind of some party and snowballs into total fucking destruction. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's a bunch of sixteen year olds with access to a place to do everything they've ever wanted to do without being caught which was fucking insane that none of the neighbors i mean it's just one of these perfect storms you know and it was like we believe me feel fucking terrible about it at this point you know but uh the funny part was (laughs) that when we were (laughs) we were going to court on these very serious charges you know and we're fucking 17 so you got arrested though for this oh yeah yeah (sighs) and i got arrested and convicted and the whole fucking thing and i was <laughs> it sucked uh so uh we're going to court the f- for the arraignment the first bit of reality because we had already been arrested but that's not real you know how that is and then you get out of there and you go back home and you're like ah oh, my bed and my weed and, you know, like, <laughs> right. and then you can it's like all still here yeah like you can pretend still that things are okay so you know we go so months later we go to the arraignment <clears throat> the night before the fucking arraignment uh, we had these mushrooms that were just fucking out of this world, you know, awesome mushrooms. And I call up my friend Jimmy, who was also part of this whole thing, and I say, "Dude, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some mushrooms, you know, like let so." And he had some too. He's like, "All right, I'll do them too. Let's do them right now, and then you 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 know like get over here and we'll hang out." So. Or however it worked, whatever. I stole my mom's car because <laughs> he lived way across town. Because I was so friend, we're like probably just in in retrospect. I'm thinking we're probably just like so subconsciously fucking terrified of what's going to court, what we're going to court for and stuff that we're just completely acting nuts, you know. Didn't you so have I, a lawyer or anything? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I stole my mom's car and drove across town, and we went and, – and we actually went and knocked on our guy's – window who was the mushroom dealer and bought more mushrooms and so we did like <laughs> you know a ton of these like crazy mushrooms each ran around town all night drove around the car fucking just tripping balls laughing our asses off all night um i come home i bring the car home my mom's up waiting at the door i'm still tripping she's got to drive me to court she took off work to drive me to court for fucking like burglary and all this stuff, you know, and 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 she's and she's like, "Where have you been all night?" And I'm like, "Should stop doing mushrooms." Like I'm just like, "It's fine," you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know that's what I mean about being a dick. <laughs> and all right, so I remember her face was just like, she didn't even have a facial expression. It was just. It, it was it was just like those words went through her and her face was just like a thought cheese grater that didn't even let them get to her brain. Her face just like shredded all everything I said <laughs> and she just walked away. It's like, all right, that didn't happen and, yeah. and, and, and walked away. And I just went and got ready for court, put my clothes on. She didn't say a fucking word. She's like, get in the fucking car. We get in, we drive there. Um... I'm, my pupils are fucking wide as can be, you know? And what I didn't think about is I had been tripping balls with my friend Jimmy all night, and he's going to be there in court with me. And now we're still tripping, and we're going to see each other in court. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. Like, this is – we're going to laugh in court. <laughs> you know? And I can, like, see it coming from, like, a mile away. And finally – when we got, when I got to the, and I was walking down the hallway towards the, uh, towards the courtroom, you know, when we got to the courthouse and I see Jimmy and his parents sitting there and I'm walking with my parents and the vibe that I got from like his parents and I was like, they, they knew they're like, if you fucking pieces of shit, even so much as glance at each other. We're gonna slash your throats, you know, and, and 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 we just didn't even look even in each other's direction ever. I was so fucking hyper aware of his presence, wow. but like we we didn't look at each other whatsoever. And then we walk into the courtroom, and um, at some point during the courtroom, we like in the court proceedings, we made eye contact with each other for a second and had to like suppress like a quick like. Oh, this is fucking really crazy, you know, and um, because we're still tripping, you know, and the yeah. judge is like talking to you, and you're just like, I don't know, man, <laughs> I don't really care that, about this right yeah. now. How did that pan out? Oh well, we got yeah, we got convicted, <laughs> um, but and that um, I didn't get in trouble for tripping at court. They didn't notice apparently, but uh, yeah, or they didn't care. My mom gave up on me. <laughs> that's that's still going on now uh <laughs> so like but like did you have to like pay did you have to go to jail like what happened? uh yeah well we didn't no you know what we didn't actually do any jail um because i it ended up but when we got arrested it was a turn yourself in situation and they just processed oh, okay. us and let us go and then i think you know because we were underage when it happened um we got uh like a bunch of um, swap, which is like the yeah, I know what that is. yeah, like so we got we got like a ton of swap and fines and like restitution uh, to the to the family and um, yeah, you know, just all the kind of little bullshit and you know What's classes and community service and shit and whatever else yeah, you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, really. They should have fucking thrown us in a dungeon for what we did. I mean, they 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 should have thrown us in a dungeon with just fucking pythons and komodo dragons, scorpions. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've 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 had kind of similar experiences with the law. Like I almost became a ward of the state. <laughs> like I fucked up so many little things enough times where they were just like, "Don't fuck this up," or like, "That's it." Like I would have seen two years in juvie. <laughs> but, yeah, and if if all I had to do was stop smoking pot, they give you a lot of chances. Did when, I stop uh, smoking pot? No, no, <laughs> no, no. They give you a lot yeah, of chances um, when you're like, 
you know, I don't know, white, white maybe? Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, is that really the whole reason? Because, like, I always like to think it's maybe because, like, I know how to walk in there and hold my head high and be well-spoken and maybe I don't look like I belong in jail, you know? But, like, mm -hmm. is it just all race? I don't know, you know? It's race, it's class. Because I know I know shit. how to walk in there and talk the way they want a person to talk. Some of you it's know? just luck. Yeah. I guess some people don't grow up in a way that they learn that shit. You yeah. Know? <laughs> as far as cops go, when I was a kid, and I don't like to say, like, this cop was cool or whatever, but I got, I've, gotten, I've gotten caught with, with drugs when I was, like, you know, 14, 15, and they didn't arrest me or anything. They were just like, hey, you shouldn't have that there. Give me that bag of pot and dumped it out. And we're like, you fucking kids. Were you in Canada? No, I was in Burr Ridge. And they were, the, we, they, the, dude, we would have like, I mean, that it would happen a couple times, but more often than not, the cops around us would just fucking go nuts just searching your stuff and, and yeah, harassing people. And well, stuff, I had yeah. that too, but I mean, I, I can also think of circum of times where it's like I did get caught and they were just like, meh. You know what? I don't feel like dealing with this basically at the time. And I'm like, I don't know. The, the police attitude has changed a lot. We're talking like this yeah. was in like 90, what, 92? Mm. Things have sure yeah. changed quite a bit. What? What uh... Mac, you're yeah, me pass. too. I think we're overdue for a break. Do you want to do any yeah. more, or do you want to call it a night? I think we got to everything I wanted to talk about. All right. I kind of can't stop thinking about the 3D printer. What about it? I just, uh, I keep imagining the things you can make. And how weird and futury it is. I don't know, I like it when they make things that are so futury. What would you make? Um, I would make the world's smallest scale replica of the largest rocking chair ever made. You know what I would make? A Chinese puzzle ball. Have you ever seen one of those? No. Check, look those up real quick and, and post that on the page. There are these fucking things that I think that's what they're called. Uh, try to make sure of that, but there's these fucking things that these guys would make out of like ivory, I think. Yes. And Chinese puzzle ball. Yeah, and, the, and they're like some of them are like 20, 30 levels, but picture like a perfect sphere of ivory that then contains, um, you know, like 20, 30 inner totally movable spheres of ivory all carved out of one solid piece. So these guys use the most tiny instruments to, do you see, do, am I describing yeah, that right? Yes. How, would you, how would you describe that to um, people? They are concentric spheres carved i mean it's incredibly intricately and then they have like large holes in each of them that line up but it's a it's a puzzle that you have to get them to line up um yeah all carved from the same piece of material they're fucking incredible and and they would take years to make yeah like a master craftsman would just make a few of them you usually know? made of at least three to seven layers but the world's largest puzzle ball is 42 layers wow yeah, they're the one of the most insane thing I've ever seen. I, I, I was at a like a gem and like stone fucking little museum a couple years ago, and it's it's the most impressive piece of like artistic craftsmanship I can think of that I think I've ever seen. Maybe uh, Chinese puzzle balls. No, I, I heard what you were talking about. It yeah. always makes me think of once again Hellraiser or the Hellbound Heart if you want to go to what the book is called, like puzzle boxes and their their magical powers and whatnot. That's one of my favorite books, though. So. I never read that. These are. Uh, it's a lot like the movie. I don't think I ever saw it either. What? Yeah, I know. I should watch that. That's huh? one of my favorite movies too. I should watch it and review it on the next show. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> one and two. Do honestly. you want to talk about Hellraiser next week? Yeah, watch it and oh yeah, I, would I bet love I'm not. To. I bet I'm not gonna like it. No, it's brilliant. I'll bet you I make fun of it. No, and I'll fill you <laughs> in on like the backstory of stuff that like is in the book and maybe not really covered in the movie. I'll bet you I make fun of Hellraiser, Andrea. What do you think? 
Yeah, I'll no, bet, no. I'll you, bet you there's will. nothing to make fun of in the first in the first one. In the first that one is like one, a challenge. Wait, I've seen the cover of it. It looks like I can make fun. <laughs> other of than it. other it than, like, all right, I, think I can make fun of that alone. The the book is like I said, it's a, it's a little different, and I'll I'll talk about this next week. Seriously, it's a guy. It's a guy with a clay wig and needles coming out of his head. Oh, okay. You, you're talking about Pinhead, the character known as Pinhead. Anyway, is that is that his? Yeah, name? that's what they call him. I mean, okay. that's not what he's called in the movie. Or anything. I thought that guy's name was Hellraiser. No, Hellraiser is just the name of the <laughs> movie. <laughs> it actually has nothing to do with heaven or hell. There's none the of guy's that. Guy's name was Clint Hellraiser. The movie like yeah. totally cuts through all that bullshit. It, it's about the uh, different dimensions of 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 flesh. Basically, everything is flesh. Pleasure, pain. It's all just flesh. It's it's brilliant. Clive Barker is one of the most brilliant writers. His stuff is so fucking amazing. Him and Bentley Little. If if people out there want to read some really good like, All right, let's talk about Hellraiser next week because people have been telling me about this movie since I was like five years old, and I just excellent. always thought the cover looked stupid, so I never yeah, want to watch it. I never watched it. I watched one time a movie called Doctor Giggles. That movie's <laughs> stupid. Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah. And I and I watched that, and my friend wanted to get Hellraiser, and I was like. Nah, we should get Dr. Giggles. You made the wrong fucking choice. No, I like Dr. <laughs> Giggles. Dr. Giggles sewed his son up in his own mom's body and sent him into the hospital so he could get him corpse parts for his fucking project. Hellraiser's really deep. Seriously, Hellraiser's not Did you hear not what like, I said? Yeah, Hellraiser I like that. Hellraiser is not like a, 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 a... That's a very shallow, like, typical <laughs> horror movie. That was Hellraiser great. is nothing like that. Hellraiser's deep. Seriously, fucking... Dr. Giggles killed a girl with one of those uh, bone saws, you know, right? She was a slut, too. Oh, there's so much. There's so many good things I could say about Hellraiser. Like, or the Hellbound Heart. The book is even better, of course, because books are always better. But the book is even more graphic and more descript. Uh, and what, you know what? Here's what, what, what we're the Cenobites look like in the book, you're like, holy shit. Here's your homework for next thir- Thursday. Everybody's got to watch Dr. Giggles and watch Hellraiser. <laughs> and here's a here we'll we'll have a debate that's gonna piss off every horror fan ever, and we'll post it, mm-hmm. and, and we'll pretend I'm a huge horror fan. No, no, and we'll we're gonna have a debate pretending that we think Doctor Giggles is like a worthy adversary <laughs> to Hellraiser, because I know that people are gonna get mad about that. But I'm gonna take the position that Doctor Giggles is better. What? Well, like Doctor Giggles is like a comic horror film. It's a it's not meant to be taken seriously. Like that's fine for what it is. Which is why I like Hellraiser, it. Hellraiser, though. And guess what else about Dr. Like, Giggles? The day, the same day that we rented it, we rented Dr. Mario. And that was a fucking <laughs> awesome day. Yeah, that sounds I'm like sure. an awesome day. That does day. sound like an awesome day. But- I did that with my friend Scott Hadley in third grade. He lived on 6th Street. Dr. Giggles <laughs> is like... Um, if... if I'm trying to think of a metaphor for like how to compare these apples and oranges properly here. Like... I don't know. The Bong Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Uh, behind their house was an old alley that was that was like gone, you know, and you could tell it 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 had like a like a little sidewalk and a, and a sewer kind of cap in it and stuff. And at one point, it used to be like a walkthrough, you know, mm-hmm. but it was fenced off now. It was closed off from people's big fucking wood yard fences, and nobody used it anymore. But it used to be like a little common throughway. And uh, we used to jump over in there, and it was very fucking like that. And that was in the era of horror movies, where that was like a perfect fucking horror movie setting. Don't you love and finding it was just yourself like, in places? Like that? Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, and it was just like grass growing through the fucking sidewalk. I'm gonna turn the stupid music off until we're actually ready to leave. Uh, <laughs> and then, because I thought we were done, but it was just like grass growing up through the sidewalk and this old fucking rusty like sewer grate and just this like forgotten little stretch of sidewalk that nobody would be in except one time you know or once in a while the bad kids would be in there shooting bbs but uh speaking of shit like that the last thing i wanted to say is that there was a creepy old rusty tricycle from like the 50s on this old path down to where we used to hang out under this bridge under this highway there was this just old like made of rust tricycle you know on a, like an old two track gravel road, mm-hmm. and I was going back there to hang out one day, and uh, I left it. I like I grabbed it out of the weeds because we had been looking at it for years, and I grabbed it out of the weeds and I positioned it like as creepy as I could, like standing up with it slightly turning, you know, mm-hmm. in the fucking 
road where where kids would walk to hang right. out. I'm like that'll creep some people out. So I went back under the bridge and I hung out by myself listening to music for a while and getting real stoned, you know. And I walked out about 2 hours later and I walked back down the road and walk up around the fucking curve. And I was like, oh, my fucking God. <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me. And I was like, oh, yeah, I put that there. <laughs> That's awesome. No, so, yep. you scared the shit out of me and my friends with that. And I found out years yeah, see, every, later every that it was you our, that had yeah, done that. Every kid in our town went back there to, to hang I remember, out. Yeah. I remember bringing it up to you one time when we were talking about, like, creepy things we found in the like, woods. Yeah, and I you were like, put that I tricycle did, out there yeah. like that. Yeah, I, did, I used to it do it all the time. It was terrifying. It was truly terrifying It was a really creepy. Because you're walking through this, like, desolate Here's wooded area and you just yeah. see that old creepy fucking tricycle Ugh. like we gotta get out of yeah, here not this way yeah. there one time behind my friend's house that they were running at the time in grade school there was like deep forest you know like behind the house and after you you know there was the house and it just went way back into just you know endless forest and we would go back there a lot one day we were walking around we were way deep in it and somebody had made we don't know who somebody had made like a hut out of like vines and shit this must have taken forever and inside were like a bunch of candles and like bones and i'm not kidding that we were like this is like so Dude, once in a while when you're kids in the suburbs, you find some fucking weirdo's lair. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it does happen once in a while. That's that's and you and you're like roaming in some like you're like, hey, where what what's between this wall and the highway? You know, you <laughs> yeah. go back there, you're like, oh no, oh no, oh no. It's a fucking cocoon of porn pages, you know, and it's like <laughs> hanging from some dead tree. You're like, we should go. Yeah. Um, this is We all went wrong. back a bunch of times though, and somebody else was obviously going in and out of there and like doing whatever, because stuff whatever would be a little different. Yeah, doing, you yeah. just be like, okay, stuff's a little different, you know, like somebody's using this hut tp thing that was creepy I don't yeah know. that's what that's where my your story very much reminded me of that because that a uh, creepy ass nightmare on elm street style tricycle in the woods is yes very creepy <laughs> like, yeah 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 um so things for next week the the what did i ever hellraiser. say hellraiser dr say giggles before? versus hellraiser and we need this bong all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome no i uh, so Bonk the Hellraiser up. thing, and we're we're also going to talk about Matt Bennett. Who Matt okay. Matt Bennett? He's one of our former guests, and uh, he he wrote a book called The Drifter Diaries, and he's like a guy that just kind of scums around uh, like hotels and then like leaves town for a while and then has no plan and shit. And all the while, he makes like really insane uh like instagram videos of him just like rambling with no shirt on in a motel <laughs> and I, I think we should go i think we should go over some of those and then have him call us up and uh we'll talk to him oh, for yeah. for a minute or two so let's do that next week too all right that sounds awesome so uh thanks for sitting in with us matt while we try to figure out our uh our transition from the days of the earth like oh you know what else are you writing this stuff down yes i'm glad this is the bong show because the bong mm. show is good for coming up with ideas it's bad for doing shows but it's good <laughs> it's good for coming up with ideas for future shows uh we'll we'll do a tribute to the earthling next week and we'll play some cool. of the we'll play some of the, we'll play some of the earthlings uh finest moments on the show <clears throat> oh and this sunday our friend tom is coming on cuz he's starting a show we're we're branching out into a network here, uh, and we're trying to get some more friends to uh, to start shows and kind of test their own talent out at this. And Tom is going to start a show called the Expansion Project. Uh, I think that's right. I hope I'm not too retarded, stone to remember that. But uh, he's going to come on Sunday and bullshit with us and and hang out up at the studio and talk about his new show. So that's exciting too. Good. And we're going to have a lot of announcements coming up about like how we're going to handle becoming a network that does different shows and, and what we're going to call that and how we're going to handle, you know, it broadcasting <laughs> it and all that, all that shit. Yeah. We'll, we'll be keeping you guys updated on yeah. all that shit as we go forward. So this has been the Thursday evening overdose. Thank you very much for being with us. Good night. So long. See you later. Goodbye. I do. I do.